Hello everybody, we are we are starting already. We can see the board, but where the two players are going to sit, Anna is always sitting at the same place. Today she's going to be white, she is going to play the sixth round in this very very exciting uh, open tournament, Reykjavik Open. Anna has played five games. The last game she played was the fifth round. She has finished like one and a half hour before. So she played the last game to finish and they finish with just two, uh, with the two kings. And actually we are, we can see the board there. I'm waiting for the chess.com board to come up. For some reason it takes a little bit of time here, but I hope it will come up at any moment so we will be able to follow the game also on the board but so Anna is uh, she's coming at any moment she's going to sit there with the white pieces so Anna has two and a half after five games she lost the first game against the grandmaster she won the second game then she lost a game against a very young Indian player I think his name is Kamabatula so stand and uh, actually this plays one player up in the top four out of five. Here we have Anna's opponent, I believe Aaron uh, Spencer from, uh, from the USA. So in here we have Anna coming and they will just start the game at any moment. They will start the game at any moment. It's actually already uh, four o'clock in Icelandic time, five o'clock CET time and they're going to play the next game of this day. It will be the sixth round and we are just waiting for the board to come up. We have a bit of technical issue here. I don't know why we don't get the board for the sixth round. I just hope it will come at any, any moment. But here, no, it was not that one who was the opponent. Here we have the opponent of Anna. He is just sitting there and uh, uh, they will start the game at any moment and what but um, at any any moment so this is such a beautiful tournament you see how players are coming because they play the double round they are now they shake hands what you always do to start the clock we don't we haven't got the chessboard here uh, now so i will have wait a little bit we might have to go to look for it on another place i don't know why it's not here because I really want to show you the game on the board. It will make it so much easier. So we had d4, d5 coming, d4, d5 coming, but I don't get the board here now. So it might be we'll have to look for it for another way. It was maybe, it was such a short break. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, let's see. We will come here to analysis and we will put up the board here. So we will have d4, d5, c4, c6. We have a slav again. Knight c3, knight f6. Let's see now what is Anna going to do. No, I don't think Anna forgot the glasses. I think she have them on the side. I do hope because she will need the glasses. So she's playing the same opening as she did the last game with white, the last game yesterday. She's playing knight f3, let's see, and her opening go for e6. Uh, her opening goes for actually the same thing, and here we have the same position at the board as she had yesterday. And now we have to wait. Anna, her opponent play exactly like the uh, uh, exactly like the game from yesterday. So Anna played such a huge game. She played the game for five and a half hours this morning. She was black. She was under pressure, and in the end, it was a draw. Now she is playing with the white pieces, and her opponent did actually not play this morning. He took a bye, which meant that he got a half a point without playing the game. So let's see what is he going to play here. I'm not sure. Uh, so Anna is having two and a half out of five games. Uh, I don't know if I can move the board a bit. I'm not sure. No, I don't think I can move the board. I'm sorry. I don't think I can move the board here. Uh, I'm sorry. And now we have E3 here. This is like the Mirana. And 
exactly like Anna played last time. So let's see if who will be the first one to go to change. Her opponent is playing knight bd7 and I just hope that Anna will play something differently in some moment because just to get out of the opening preparation, just to play something differently. But let's see what Anna is going to do here. You can play lots of moves, but it looks like Anna, she's going for this bishop d3. And I think they will follow the game from yesterday. I'm just hoping that Anna will be the first one to change the board. Okay, so we are actually going, um, there are so many things happening here. I will take this up here. So I will go to, we will go to Evans, we go to Reiki, we open. I will have to find the game here instead. And here we have the sixth round. And I will look, I will have to go down here. Let's see if I can do that. I'm sorry. Uh, no, this is not the game we wanted to see. We wanted to see, I will see if I can just take this down. I will search here. Round six we have here, and here we have Anna, here we have her, and we have, I have to play the moves here, because we don't, it doesn't work this uh, online, we have this position, e6, e3, knight bd7, and bishop d3, and here we have the position, her opponent went b5, and I just hope that Anna, some moment, will just leave, and not play what she played in the other game, because she wants it's very important that she get uh, her opponent to play himself, not the preparation. Oh, I'll take some water. I need some water, I believe. So Anna played a very, very long game. She played five and a half hours this morning. She only got a break like one hour and a half before she is going to sit here and to play this game. And now we have Bishop D3 and we have Bishop D6 coming here. This is the position at the board. This is the, the position at the board. And this is very logical. We remember the bishop here is looking at the king side, but also looking at the b, b at the at the queen side. And also takes control of e4. So bishop d6 was played without any other moves. This is absolutely fine to play. I guess castling now is very, very normal. So it was actually her opponent who um, made something different here. First, who was changing um the, the way you're playing. So, so we have this Miraner again. It's not opening, I am playing so much myself, but it's a very solid opening, very, very, uh, very good opening. It can be solid, but it's a little bit slow because you put the pawn in E3 and we see this bishop is not coming out. And black has this passive bishop, but black said is to go B5 and later on to play C5. It has to be with either pushing B5, uh, or playing a6 first. But this is the idea. This bishop is coming here to b7 to be open here. And this bishop, we don't really know. Will white be able to go e4? White can always go e4, but black will strike back. So if Anna go e4 here, she would be threatened to win there. But her opponent would absolutely go e5, stop that move. And after that, uh, you can play in different ways here. But it would be, this is absolutely about the equal position. So um, Anna castled quickly. I think we will see castling quickly also from her opponent. Absolutely. I think this is uh, absolutely what he will play. What more could he do? He could go a6 here now, but he played bishop d6. He put this bishop on the best place here in the middle, like Anna has this bishop on the best place. And so he will surely go castling. I don't know what... Uh, after castling here, what can we do? Maybe we can go queen c2, can go a3, b2, bishop d2. We can go e4. e4 will always be uh, like this. Maybe h3 could be played and something like this. And I don't know if you could soon could start taking on e5. I'm not sure if you could play something like this and maybe bishop f4. So... So let's see what will Anna play here. You have different plans. One is to go a4. In the other game, Anna has some idea go a3, b4. But I think we will see differently. She could also go this little more b here. And if you go a3 here now, we might want to make a big move like a4. I'm wondering how will a position be like this. Now this is getting fine for black. So what is this? Can we go knight e4, take here? And we have this pawn, bishop b7. We go rook c1 and we go rook c8. 
and here we are having some pressure and we can go B4 immediately. So we can go B4 and now we're getting a position we like to have. This is actually our own improvement with bishop d2. So this is a move I would like to see. Did her opponent play castle? Yes, he played. He played castle and this is position at the board. So Anna is playing Reykjavik Open. She's playing it together with 400 our play, uh, other players. And after five games, Anna has two and a half out of five. She has 50% and uh, it's it's fine, it's absolutely fine. Also because in the last game she was under pressure, even though she played against a lower rated player, but he played very nice over on from Germany and Anna had to fight for five and a half hours until only the kings were left on the board. There were no other pieces left, only the kings and then it was a draw. So after five rounds there are three players on four and a half out of five only three players and then there are 26 players on four points and one of them are this young Indian player who beat Anna in the third round but there are so many players up there in the top and Anna is together with her opponent in the middle of this tournament they have both two and a half out of five they have both 50 percent and this is a tournament where uh, it's not like a knockout Knockout is quite li like you have in tennis. Knockout in chess is uh, uh, knockout in chess is quite unusual. Even though we have it, we have the World Cup where we play with knockout, which is very very exciting. I would say it's one of my favorite uh, tournaments. But in general, you play uh, a chess tournament with a certain number of rounds. Normally, there are nine rounds when they're international tournaments because nine rounds means that you can try to make norms. And when you make your, your dream is, of course, to make titles, that would be you're achieving something very good and uh, you will be more attractive also for the organizer to come if you have a higher title. So uh, so it's normal to play nine rounds. And even if you lose a game, you will be paired for the next round. So you will always play these nine rounds in some tournament like there in Reykjavik. Uh, you will have you can take a buy. It means that you will get half a point without the game. So I actually I like bishop d2 here. I like this bishop d2 and the idea is if you go uh, let's see we go a6 now I like knight a4 maybe a4 b4 could be too also possible but there are a little bit some some problems here on c6 so I like this b uh, this uh, bishop d2 here now immediately maybe you can come here and then the question is is this something to be concerned about I don't know bishop b7 Queen c2, we don't threaten them, we can go rook c1 and then we have rook c8 and Black's plan is absolutely to try to get in c5, to go knight f6 and c5. So maybe this is the right way to play after bishop d2 to yes to go b4, yes to go b4. Is there any, maybe is it better to come here, but we have the knight on the rim. You can actually go here already now. How is a position like this? You are actually open up the center before white is getting time to have a piece here. So could it be that we should go queen c2? I'm not so sure how is the best way to play it. Then we'll absolutely play c this bishop. And if we come here, I just want to show you that this is not so good. We are threatening against h7, but we're not threatening against this because after f5, we cannot take care. This will be a pin and we would actually lose the game. So go back, this is position. How is Anna going to play this? Uh, no, I don't know. Bishop d2, I guess e4 is a move. Maybe a3 is a move. And, but maybe not a4. It looks like very, very solid for... Uh, it looks very solid here for uh, for black. And, uh, and this is the idea for black, that black doesn't take on c4 before Anna had played this bishop d3. So c is... See, cuando, eh, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, so uh, but this is just a very well known position. I don't know what is the exact move here to play. Bishop, bishop d2, a3, we saw in that game, but after a3, a6, yes, after a3, e6, we can go b4. We had this before. I wonder if we can go uh, maybe knight e4 here. Is this like this? But we have bishop b7. And could we go b4? And now we have a5. And this is actually more or less 
what we saw in the game yesterday with queen e7 position like this and here and this is i think e5 is more or less the position we had here but this is absolutely fine to play it's absolutely fine to play so let's see what anna will do here she's taking her time and because you have so many different plans um, to, to consider and maybe she also want to make it a little bit different than the way she played the last game yeah i also hope she had something to eat because uh you you need to have you need to have food when you're playing these long games we saw anna played for five and a half hours that was crazy that was so long and that was the last game to finish and uh, yeah chess is like that and it's tough it happened when it's a double round because she doesn't have so much time to readjust to you know she needs to take the energy and then she's playing this game and it's gonna be a tough game uh, again also and i am sitting here i am pia kramling i am grandmaster pia kramling i'm anna's mother and I'm commenting on her games in Reykjavik Open. Anna has played five games. This is the sixth round. There are three more games to go. So they will play nine rounds. Today is a double round. Saturday, last Saturday was a double round. But the last three games will be played one game each day. So the seventh round will be tomorrow. Eighth round will be on Wednesday. And on Thursday we'll have the last round of the tournament. <clears throat> yes, I noticed my voice is a little bit going away now. <clears throat> and we can see both of them very focused. Uh, A3 is absolutely fine. It, I think this is I think this is actually what Anna would like to play because she played it in the other game. But uh, I think, but just because she played it in the other game, I believe she would like maybe to change something different, to play differently. If she goes here, we can have a6, she could go b4. I'm just wondering, is there something else she could play? She could play like this also, taking here. Now she has fret here, bishop b6, and now she could go b4, a5, and we have this position, which is absolutely is fine to play. Mm. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> so now this is not played this is the position i want really you to see the position at the board and it it looks like this so what is i yeah this is what we have we have this beautiful pawn here on d4 and what is black's play is to pl play against this pawn it could be playing c5 but before going c5 we need to defend b5 or we need to push it so one could be to go c5 another way of playing could be to go e5 so black is absolutely going to play against this pawn here yeah this bishop could come to d2 i would say that this is the most normal square you could also go e4 e5 i don't know if you go and now maybe h3 i like this little h3 move but is it right? And then we will see something like this. We will see something like this. And there will be a little bit pressure here. And how? I have no idea how a position is like this. Maybe take, I don't know if you should take so quickly or if you should go something like rookie one. Could this be possible? But it could also be getting dangerous. So I don't know. I would prefer Anna doesn't go E4 because uh, E4 will come with more force. I would say if Anna go E4, E5, then this will be more force for uh, more stronger for black to play e5 so i don't like e4 so much in this position uh, but i'm not sure what is the best way to play after bishop d2 b4 this looks like a very very logical way to play for black and we have rook c1 we have this move and now the plan is maybe we can go i don't know we can go queen e2 uh, we can go queen e2 we could even go maybe knight e5 but i'm wondering can we play this here bishop b5 can we now go for c5 but it could be that this is not so good because we have e4 we have e4 and this could actually be 
getting some, some, something, but because we're threatening a fork and now it's not possible to go E5. But this is very, very far away. This is very far away. So what moves could I expect Anna to play? It could be bishop d2. It could be like, like in a game e3. It could also be e4. One of these, I would say, is very probably uh, that she will go. She can also go queen c2. This looks very normal for me to go. But the idea is actually to a little bit to put pressure here. But after this move, you know, bishop rook b7 and rook c8 will be coming. And the question is, is the queen good here or is it not? After e4, we will have e5 again. And I'm just wondering how is a position like this? taking here and maybe now we need to make maybe h3 i'm just wondering how is a position like this uh, this is maybe rook e8 we should put the rook somewhere maybe bishop e3 are we scared that you're taking the pawn no we can always take back even if we are damaging the pawn structure we will have this two bishop and we're defending e4 i don't know if queen e7 could be possible but we will defend it from here so let's see what will Anna do yeah queen c I think queen c2 is a fine move if she wants to plan e4 I like to play this move first and now to go e4 I think yes the queen is better here on c2 because it defends e4 but it's also open up for to play with the rook so if the plan is e4 I would like to start with queen c2 first so queen c2 I think is a normal move bishop d2 she can go a3 this is the way she played the other game so she can play it in different ways but one thing with queen c2 is that now after this move here take uh, you are actually we are having a double threat against c6 and h7 so after queen c2 it's very logical black will just defend this pawn and we have have an or I don't know if rook d1 could be a position here to play I'm not sure maybe this is wrong to play here and maybe we have knight f6 after bishop did here can it be that we can go c5 already now I'm not sure what is going to happen here but we can see that black will get this back and it will be about equal but the queen is not so well placed here on c2 so this is long way this is absolutely long way this Castling was played and Anna is thinking her opponent is sitting there also. So she has lots of moves to consider here. It could be a3 like she played the last game. It could be queen c2. It could be bishop d2. It could be e4 also. These are the, I would say these are the four main moves I am expecting her to choose from. Yes, the plan with a3 is actually one is the stopping b4, but one is that it could be this is what happened in the game that you want to go b4. It could be that you want to play a position like this. So, or maybe after a6 that we go knight e4, take, and then later b4. So b4, if Anna plays e4, the plan is to go. The plan is to stop b4 and it could be that she wants to go b4 just to keep this pawn here on c6 and this was the plan she played uh, yesterday when she played against this opening So, oh no, sorry, this is the position at the board, this is the position at the board, but a3 is a possibility to play. Uh, there are also other moves that could be possible, but a3 is one of those, absolutely. And behind, uh, behind Anna we see lots of players, most of them are just sitting and of course the game is starting up you are in the opening uh, in, in the opening and I guess most of the plays are quite uh, yeah did this I'm not sure here here e4 e5 uh, if bishop g5 could work but I think this is a problem because here you have this trick and knight g4 and you will grab the bishop so this could absolutely be I'm not sure how this will be. 
I don't know what was going to happen. You have Queen the Eight here in the end, and this is getting crazy. This is getting crazy, absolutely. But it's also, so the game is like this. This was played, Bishop here. No, sorry. Castling and castling, and this is the position we have at the board. So what did Anna play? Anna played e4. I'm not so happy about this. e5 came. I asked, I, I would have wished, but okay, now I like h3. I think h3 is a good move to play. I just uh, think this is a very good move to play. So there are not some tricks here against h3. And one idea with h3 is also that you want to go bishop e3. So I would, uh, I would absolutely like Anna to play this little move h3 because uh, you don't want to play here. Then we have knight g4. You're very much annoying the bishop. It's, you're not so happy to have it like this. So with h3, also oh, you little scared there could be some tactics here and you can take on h2. So that's why h3 is, is just the move I think is just very normal to play. If you take here, we will just have to take it back. If you play something like, I don't know if b4, knight e5 could be coming and where is the bishop going? I'm not so sure what is the best place for it to go. Yes, bishop c2 because we need to defend here. And bishop c5, this is no problem. We can always go. Uh, here we don't go bishop e3. We need to kick the bishop. And we don't mind play the end games. I think this is, this is absolutely fine to play. But black is absolutely fine in position like this also. So Anna played. Anna hasn't played. But she played e4. And her opponent played e5. And now I... Um, yeah, I like this h3 move. I think this is quite important to play because I'm a little bit scared. If you go something like this here, could you please some tactics here? Yes, this could be starting something very, very. And bishop c5, we see how weak this is becoming. No, h3 is yeah, such an important move to play. She needs to play h3 to stop the knight to g4. And let's see if she plays. She plays h3. She plays this very, very good move. I'm so happy to see that this is such a good move. Absolutely. This is a very, very good move. And she needs to stop the knight to come into g4. She's planning to go bishop e3. And, but now her opponent can play, let's see, knight e5. We will go still bishop c2. We need to defend this, I guess. And bishop is coming here. We, I think, can we not play? No, we cannot play bishop e3, knight c4. This is what we were looking at. But this is absolutely, I guess, bishop b6. How will a position like this be? Can we go something queen e2 or do we want to change the queens, I'm not sure actually if we want to change the queens or not. How how is the best? I don't know if we go a4. I guess we have this b4, but sometimes we have this. This is just very very uh, very special idea to put the bishop to put it on c5. But this is so far away. This, but I would say that this could be easier for black to play. But h3 was one of these must move, I would say. You need to have the pawn here. You need to avoid knight g4. You need to avoid some tactical uh, tactics with taking on h2 if the, this knight has been going away. So this was a very, very good move uh, to play. So, um, and now I'm just hoping uh, her opponent will, they are both, her opponent start thinking here now after h3. And uh, I just feel, and actually I would have preferred to play this position with queen c2, bishop b7. Because after a move like this, knight e5, Anna doesn't have knight e5. Because the bishop is good here. So the question is, is this bishop better on this diagonal than on that uh, diagonal? So maybe that's why I wanted her not to play e4 so quickly. But here we have this h3, this is on the board. Her opponent is taking a bit of time and I'm happy to see that. I am happy to see. So what can her opponent think of to play? He could go rook a to put some pressure here. Then Anna can go, she can take on e5, maybe she can go queen c2 also. She can actually play this position here, going like this, a rook e5. And now maybe going, can she go bishop e3, maybe bishop g5, but I just wonder, can we go queen c2 to play this? And we will have now a very, very, we have four against three for white here and black has three against two on this side. So this is the position at the board. It's black to move. So rookie one is one move. Taking on d4 is another move. 
uh, could B for a B mode. I don't know. I don't think B for looks like such a good mode to play here, uh, but I'm not uh, sure. Uh, what could we come here or will the, this will be bad? You, yes, I think this is K to play, but it could be that it's stronger to play like this first, that we actually play this this way and after now we go knight a4 and we try, we have a plan to go bishop e3 and put control on this square. So let's see here now uh, her opponent, this is position her opponent can play and he played quickly. What did he play? I think he played rook e8. He played rook e8. Yeah, so rook e8 is a very loud, he can move. And now he's planning maybe to take on d4 and take and put, he's putting pressure here. Now either Anna can take on e5 or she can go queen c2. I would say one of those. I don't know, queen c2 might be not, yeah, queen c2, mm, because it could be the square for the bishop. I think she'll go rook e1. I don't know if this is a good move. It could be a mistake to play this move. Could it be take here? I'm just wondering here, can we go bishop f1? And after a move like this, can we play bishop b3? But we have problems. Do we have problems with this? We have queen b6 coming. <gasps> and there is going, this is getting, this is going to get a bit uh, annoying here. Here we are getting, could we go something like knight f3? Uh, rook d8, I don't think we are worried about because we just take on c5. But how is a position like this? It's just getting, it's still fine. It's absolutely still fine. So rook e8, so Anna white, black is putting pressure on e4. This rook belongs on the e5. And here is the position. Anna needs to defend e4. She can do it. One is to actually, she can take here, take. And now she take like this and she goes queen c2. She can even go bishop e3 because after this, you cannot take here on e4. We would just win the game because we can see that there is a mate here on the last rank like this. So go B, let's go back. But this is very, very far away. This is very far away. So rook e8, um, she, Anna can actually take on e5. It could be that this is the best move to play. Yes, to take on e5 and then to play bishop e3. I'm just wondering here, here, bishop e3. I guess bishop e6 could be, could this be a normal mode to play? Uh, we put the queen on e2 and we play this position. And here we see that the bishop is here instead of b7. And we will put the rook to c1 and we are not after something like that. I guess we will just go rook to c1 and rook c8 and we will have a position like this, maybe like that. And it's, it's just equal chances for both, I would say. But this is very far from the game. Anna has to make the decision. So she can take on d4. This is absolutely one of the ideas she can do. She can go rook e1, she can go queen c2. These are the three moves I, I would say or she needs to do. Could she go, she could maybe go a3, but it looks, hmm, can she go a3? I think this is a little bit slow, but she can also play this. And the, the idea with a3 is that you're stopping b4. So e4 is well protected by the knight, but also by the bishop. So this is position at the board. And yeah, this is the sixth round in this, I say, so beautiful open tournament and Anna has two and a half out of five games. She's playing the sixth round against her, her opponent Aaron Spencer from the US and Anna the first round she played against Swedish player in the third round she played against a very young Indian player in the fourth round she played uh, against um, uh, she played against a player from Norway and this morning she played against a player from Germany and now she's playing a player from US. So you can see how international the chess tournaments are and that is just so, so very beautiful. But I would say one, two, three and four. These are the alternatives to choose here. Mm. Yes, so let's see. Now we are trying to get to the board here now. Let's see. We will see if we can get to the board here now. And we'll see Anna's board. And here we have the position and we have it live. So thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
and so this is position and it is Anna to move here now so and we can see your opponent has been playing very very quickly and as I said he's putting pressure on e4 so the question is how is Anna going is she going to defend it or is she going to because he's threatened to take on e4 and maybe go b4 to take away this knight so these are some ideas he has so she will absolutely be quick to, to she should somehow defend the pawn or taking no e5 or maybe also a3 to stop it now the board is live finally i don't know why it took such a long time maybe because it was such a small time it was only one hour and a half between the two rounds because anna played this very very long game she played a incredible long game five and a half hours and everyone had to wait for her they couldn't make the pairing or anything before anna was anna had finished I believe Anna will go rook e1. This is what I believe she will do. Um, rook e1 or maybe queen c2. One of these two moves I believe that she will play here. But after queen c2, I'm just wondering, can we take here and here and go knight e5? How will this be here? Bishop e2. And after b4, we have this. So we are, I'm just wondering, we are putting pressure on against e4. But we also have this knight c6 hanging. No, you don't want to allow this. There are lots of things happening here. So, what see? She played. What did she play? She played. Oh, she played bishop e3. Oh, this is a little bit uh, worrying for me, actually. She played this bishop e3. So, what is happening if we go knight take? Can she take knight here? Knight e5. Now, bishop e3 was actually not a good move. This is a little bit of a move that scares me now here. Because if you take here, we, we need to take here with the bishop. If you go b4 here now, do we have some a5? Oh, this is getting crazy. Knight takes, we take here, bishop takes, we take here, and after rook take, we have these tactics and we will win the queen. I will just take it out. But bishop e3, yes, I don't know, because now I'm a little scared that her opponent will take here. If Anna takes back, with him, she can do that. But now knight d5, and there are mm, is a little bit of a problem. Because if she goes here to stop bishop c4, this pawn will actually be lost. Knight take e4, she will, have, she will lose the pawn. So this is not so good. And if she goes bishop c2, knight c4 will always be in the air maybe not yet but it will be in the air so this is a little bit dangerous this is a little bit dangerous but maybe it's fine maybe it's still fine but she needs to go bishop c2 because after this we have maybe knight c6 and i don't know what is really happening here it's getting crazy so anna played bishop e3 i wasn't so happy with this move i like this move if you have made a3 first but I'm a little bit scared now. If b4 is coming, we go uh, knight. Maybe we should go knight e2. And what happens if it takes here now? Then we take here and we have some threats against c5. And if you play this, we will go knight f5. And we are getting very, very happy here. So, uh, so maybe b4 is not the right way to play this. But I'm a little bit, uh, this is a little bit loose, this pawn. So um, it could be. Uh, what we can also see that if you take here now uh, Anna needs this is the best move to take back with but I think she can take like this does we have knight c5 no knight c6 would win the game on the spot knight d5 you are looking at this and you are attacking I ask bishop c2 is normal to stay with the bishop but can we do something like bishop here no no now we have knight f5 so this would actually be good so let's go back there is still lots of things but we see this in the center we see how both of them are keeping the tension are they going to keep the tension in the future anna's plan is to go queen to c2 and then a rook to d1 so maybe rook fd1 maybe rook c1 maybe rook a d1 and rook e1 this is her plan queen c2 and then bring a rook to d1 and this move goes together because with opponent h3 there is never any knight g4 uh, annoying the bishop and that is why this moves goes together but I'm just a little bit concerned about the pawn on e4. So they are 
playing the opening. They have played, Anna played 12 modes here in the opening. She has played 12 modes. She has spent like 25 minutes. It's still absolutely fine. Her opponent has been blitzing out the modes. And um, so uh, he has been playing quite quickly, but I believe he will take a little bit time now before he will make his decision. And is he going to take on d4? If he plays something slow, I like queen c2. And if you go here now, now maybe we go with the knight. This is defended. And if something like this is coming, we go maybe here, c5. Then we have knight f5 and we have frets here against this. And this e4 pawn, we can actually defend like this. And this will absolutely be fine because we have a plan like b3, b3 and bringing this knight, knight b2 and knight c4. And a knight on c4 would just be a dream piece. But first of all, we want to put the rook to the... But after a move like this, I will just go b3 and we're stopping this here from uh, happening. So let's say, go back. This is not the position. Has he played it? No, he hasn't played. He is thinking. He is thinking. Um, this is no sorry. This is the position at the board. Let's see. We do like this. And we will have it. This is position at the board. Anna just played bishop e3. This was one of the moves I didn't consider at all. I didn't consider that at all. And I, because I'm a little bit concerned about this e pawn, uh, what could be happen with it, with it. So, yeah, black can go some slow move developing. Black can also start taking action here in the center because black has put this rook here looking at the e4 pawn. So that could absolutely be a possibility also. So, um, and I believe black will just think a little bit uh, before he will play. So I don't think we'll see this move uh, so quickly. I, I believe he will think at least five more minutes because uh, he, uh, be before he takes his decision. We have seen the cow opening, the first game, Anna was black, she had to play against the cow opening when Platon Galperin, uh, playing for Sweden, played it against her and uh, unfortunately Anna in the end lost. But it, was, it might be the first time a grandmaster chose to play the cow opening in a classical game. It absolutely was the first time Anna got to play against the cow in a classical game. He go b4, he go b4. And now knight e2 is absolutely a good move to play here. She can also take on e5, but knight e2 is a good move. This is a good move to play the knight here. And the idea with this move is actually that if you take, you want to take with this knight. So we are putting frets against c6. We are also having knight f5 coming. So I like b4 was played, b4 was played in this position. We have this b4 was played. And now I really would like Anna to go knight e2. I think this is absolutely, she shouldn't put the knight on the rim. So here, because black, Black is controlling a4 square. And she played knight e2 very, very quickly. This was a good move. This was absolutely the best move to play here. And the idea is, and I don't believe, I guess uh, her opponent could actually go c5 here. But if you go c5 and we play like this, uh, this and here, I think this is just getting fine. Maybe rook c1, you see c5 is hanging. Maybe even rook c1 could be possible. I'm not sure what has happened after here, but we have rook takes c5. We're getting bishop b7, but we start getting lots of activities here. The bishop needs to come back, bishop e5, and we will maybe go yes f3 and rook d1. This one is a bit weak, we have active rooks and e4 is defended. We shouldn't be scared that there will be a mate here, something like that. And queen d6 is coming. Um, I'm just wondering how we can do, maybe we can go rook d1, perhaps we can also play bishop c4. We're putting some frets against f7 and rook queen d6 is no problem. There is no frets. We would just take it. But this is far from the game. e4, b4 was played. Anna played this beautiful knight e2. And I'm just hoping because her point is we're going backwards is with the pawn is that she want the root for the knight. She want, She will not take with this uh, knight. She will take with this knight. And we saw actually she had these two knights like this yesterday when she was white. And when her opponent took on d4, she took back with the e knight. We can see that this knight is more active in the center. 
this one is not so active so this is the one to bring up and also you keep in control e5 you keep in control of uh, you keep in control e5 and you are also attacking the knight the pawn on c6 and you have some uh, idea to put the knight on f5 too so this was played this is the position now uh who you play against it depends on your results anna the first round anna played against uh Grandmaster uh, Galperin, he was he's rated 25-55. So Anna was on the second half and she faced such a strong player. But when she lost that game, she went down to minus one. She was on the lower part and then she has always played against a lower rated player. But it's not clear that she will do that. It depends on her result. If Anna will win here, it could be that she will have to face a stronger player. It could be still that she will play against a weaker player. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But if she will make a draw or if she would lose, uh, she would uh, probably play against a weaker player again. But it depends on her points uh, exactly. If she's getting up in the in the field, she's getting up to the higher. The higher she gets, the more probably it is that she will play against a stronger player. And uh, when you play, her opponent has played, what did he do? He played c5. He played c5. This, he's just pushing very much. But now, um, um, uh, Anna actually... Uh, I like this one and now bishop takes is maybe the best way of playing this but this is difficult we go yes queen c2 because normally you don't want to give away the bishop so I don't believe her opponent will play this I don't believe so so taking e5 is the best move going d5 here is not uh, so good move because we have this tactical this is actually something to look out for and what is what has happened here in a position like this uh, we can absolutely play this but we have given away the bishop pair we have given away the bishop pair i'm just wondering queen c7 here how is this and this pawn will be weak this one will probably be weak so white will black will absolutely be fine here so this is the position her opponent played c5 and this was actually uh i would say it's a good move Anna shouldn't take on c5 i think taking on e5 is the best mode go d5 would be not a good move because we have these tactics we have these very very strong tactics and after you take back we have e4 it will be equal pawns but um black will get the bishop pair and the question is which pawn is weaker, the one on d5 or the one on c5? So um, the problem for white is that you will lose, you will give away the bishop pair. So uh, no, I don't want her to go to take there. I want her to take on e5. And after taking on e5, he, I think she will only consider this. Bishop take e5 is maybe the better move, but I don't know what will happen here. Can we go something here? What would be happen? But I have no idea what is happening here. Oh, this is getting crazy. This is getting crazy. And we have queen c5. Oh, this is getting so, so crazy. I don't know what will happen. And here we have maybe rook a1. Yeah, we have lots of things happening here. No, you can't play like this. So it's tactics. But taking on e5 is absolutely the best thing to do here now. And I do hope she will do it. Taking on c5, no. Because knight c5, I guess knight c5 will be coming. But maybe not. This is not the best. Maybe we can... Can we play like this? But I think this would be, hmm. Ah, and we have bishop b5. How is it? But after bishop d7, this would be, we have this very beautiful bishop here looking at f2. I just think that black will absolutely be fine. This knight wants to be on c4. It's a little bit far away from the best square. This knight doesn't have such a good way of coming into the game. Maybe something like that, but it's, it's a bit out of the game. So, no, I don't like her to take on c5. Um, I want her, this is the position. We can do it like that. We refresh here now. Uh, this is it. C5 was played. I, I must say, I think her opponent is playing well. I think he knows this position. And uh, But now I want Anna to take with a pawn on E5. Yes, to take with a pawn on E5. And it doesn't look sh like she is going to move. Maybe not yet. There's nothing wrong if she's spending a little bit of time. But she take with a pawn. And it's important to take with a pawn. Because you, well, let's see what he will take. It could be... Uh, I expect him to take with the knight. This is the normal way we do. We normally take with the knight. It could be 
that bishop takes is possible, but I would say this is such a difficult mode to play here, and this is such a difficult mode to play. Can we go something like queen b3? I don't know, I don't like queen b3 so much. I would actually like more queen c2. Yeah, you want to defend this, and if you're coming back here, uh, I want a rook, I don't know which rook, maybe rook to d1, you go something like queen here now, and maybe, maybe we can start something like this. I have no idea, bishop f4, or should we maybe go, yes, maybe we should go, I am wondering, can we play this move like this? Absolutely, and you go bishop b7, and what is going to happen? We are moving around our pieces here like this, and the only thing I am a little bit scared, I want to put the knight on c4, but we have to be a little careful with the e4 pawn. And queen d6 wouldn't be, we can even go f4 and we start having some friends. But this is far away. So Anna took here, let's see. Her opponent is thinking this is the position at the board. This is position at the board. Anna took an e5. This was a very good move. This was the best move here. And now black needs to take back because the pawn is threatening two pieces. Black needs to take back. And what did black do? Black took with the bishop. So I just think that Black knows this opening very, very well. He took with the bishop, but now I like queen c7, a queen c2. I'm defending b2. I'm looking a little bit at this one. And after a move like bishop c1, I want to bring rook to d1. We can, so, so maybe in a position like this, could bishop b7 be held here now? But I'm just wondering, do we have time to play this or would this be a mistake? We have bishop take e4. What would happen here? We have knight take e4. We cannot take it. And if you play like this, it looks like uh, we are going to have a pawn extra for black. This is not so good. So bishop take e5 was a good move. Bishop take e5 was absolutely the best move. Now I like queen c2 because now uh, we could take on e5. But if she takes, we take here. There will be some pressure here. Bishop b5, bishop d7. And how will this position be? I am not so sure. But I think uh, we have the black square bishop. Well, I don't know. It will looks like it will be, yes, very, very even. Oh, there are some pieces here. I would actually be a little bit scared to play this. We have a rook coming in here. I don't know which rook, but now we have knight d4. But I'm moving around very quickly. Shouldn't do that. But he played bishop to e5, and this is a beautiful move. This is a move which is very difficult to do if you don't know this position. I would say so. But I like now queen c2. Don't take on e5. You can do that. But I think... I like yes queen c2 because I want this uh, I want to defend b2 I want to look at e4 and I want to bring a ring in the rook but after a move like bishop here uh, now the question is can we so maybe could it be that queen b3 is better because if you go queen bishop b7 we have we have some tactics here I'm wondering what is going to happen here and maybe we can uh, now I'm wondering if we can, can we take on, can we take on f7? Is this a possibility here? We have bishop c4, but in the end we have knight d5 and we take the pawn. So I'm not sure if we take it this way or we take with bishop, I think so. And we stay with a pawn here. So it's, it's still lots of things going. So I would say queen b3 moving up. This is the position. Anna, here we have the position. Her opponent is playing quickly. He has this position at the board. So maybe queen c2, maybe queen b3. Could it be some crazy move here? No, I don't think so. I'm just wondering, could this be a move? Bishop take b2 and can we then have, oh, I have no idea what is happening. What is going to happen? Can we play this move? I don't know. King, queen e7 and we are having, I have no idea checks. The point is, we will have the check and take it. So knight g5 could be a move, but I don't think this is not the move. Uh, is, this is just a very difficult move to do. Knight g5, because we want to have some tactics here, but maybe we just go h6 and the knight, no, 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 this we don't want to play. So I would say queen c2 or queen b3, one of them. But queen c2 is the one which is easiest to play, more logical. You look at e4, but after this move, if you go bishop b5, we will have to play this. And here, uh, I guess, bishop b5 and this, to understand that this is a good position. But maybe it's not, uh, I, I have no idea what it having. Rook said, can we take on b4? Or is this wrong? No, we have rook bait. And there are some getting some 
crazy tactics. I have no idea what is happening here. So, so let's see. Bishop take e5. This was a good move. I would say that this is probably been played before. This is probably this is not here. This is the position. This is probably the main move to play. Bishop take e5, and it's a move uh, wouldn't so be so easy to make. I would say, but her opponent played it. Uh, quickly so this has been his plan to play like this and um, and it's because if you take it you normally you like to take the bishops but after you will put pressure on c2 so if you play something like this we go bishop c2 I guess there will be maybe queen c7 I don't know if this could be annoying also we I'm not sure maybe it's okay with rook a1 but we don't maybe yeah maybe maybe rookie one is okay but we can see there is some pressure here and that is knight c4 we will probably just take on c5 but i don't know it could be that anna takes on e5 this is the position bishop take e5 it could be that she takes uh, immediately but i would prefer that she goes something differently so this could absolutely be a move that she wants to play here now so she takes the bishop pair but black's pieces are becoming quite active so um it's um it's something i would i wouldn't be so happy to do i would actually prefer to go here and now i'm planning to take on uh, i'm planning to take their uh, next move and I don't know if you're coming back here. I guess we will just put maybe this is actually a very nice maneuver to put a knight on c4. It could be, and also after bishop b7, we could go knight c4, but we can also go f3 or maybe rook f1. We have everything under control here. So let's go back. Let's go back. So this is the position at the board, and it's yeah. It's, um, it looks like black knows this position very well uh, because I was I was a little bit uh, very I was surprised that black took with the bishop but it was also the strongest way to play here so this is the sixth round in Reykjavik open they are 400 players in this beautiful open and you can see some of the players there behind lots of them are sitting some are walking around and Anna is like her opponent she has two and a half out of five games and she has 50 percent and there are three players with there are three players uh, with four and a half out of five and then there are 23 players with four points so and Anna is in the middle of the field with two and a half out of five. So Anna, she lost the first game, she won the second game, she lost the third game, she won the fourth game. And this morning, when she played the first uh, game of these two in the dummy round, she made the draw, a very, very hard fighting draw. And it finished after five and a half hours. And behind Anna, we could see Yuan Yatterson. If I'm not mistaken, this was Yuan Yatterson. And he's actually, we are born the same year. He was uh, one, he was a very strong player in the late 80s and beginning of 90s. He was also a very strong junior player. And I played with him some different times a long time back. And he also went in the candidates. I think he, he went quite far in the candidates. And he's one of those legendary players playing here. And if I'm not mistaken, he's playing against, yeah, here we, he come again. He's probably thinking about his game while he's walking around. And I think he's playing against this very young Indian um, boy, Anna played the other day. Uh, his name was, uh, I think his name was, uh, let's see, Kamabatula Sustant. And I think they're actually playing together. They both have four out of five. But Anna is in deep thoughts here. She is in deep thoughts. What's she going to do? Her opponent, uh, his, what is the, her opponent made a surprising move. And when your opponent plays something you don't expect, it can become shocking because all of a sudden uh, the ideas you had uh, changed. And one of the ideas is this is a shocking move in the sense that we normally don't want to give the bishop pack so easy but black gets something back black gets time black is threatened things so if anna takes on if black is threatened to just 
uh, black is just threatening her bishop so Anna will be pushed back she will have the bishop pair but will be pushed back and that looks quite dangerous to me so Anna had a game which was five and a half hour long I don't remember how long my longest game was that I play all in a go I don't know if it's possible I played a game like seven eight hours nine hours I am not sure about that but um the longest game I played with the German was actually 16 hours and so it was but it was so many Germans and we played the game we played the end game rook and bishop against bishop this is back in 80 88 I was playing an open tournament in Spain and uh, we played this end game I had the rook and bishop against bishop so we were playing for a long time and after each two hours we were making a German and then we had to play it again so Anna is in deep thoughts her opponent is also sitting there and I think he's doing this well yeah this is the way I like to do also just to sit and to be fully focused on the game so what I would have gone queen c2 I would say that this is the, the most natural move for me to go because I am defending b2 I am defending e4 and maybe a little bit looking at c5 also so we have all this idea and the, the rooks are coming up here and I will bring a rook to d1 afterwards so this is the move I would have played in the position but it's not sure this is the best one but for me this is the most natural one to play And of course now they, we, it doesn't exist any longer adjournments and I'm so happy about it. Uh, they were good for learning, training and games, but the games could be going on for so long time. And uh, um, now these days when we have the computers, they are so good, you know, it, it, it just that they wouldn't be make any sense to have an adjournment. So we are playing the game until finish in one go and that's absolutely very, very good. So. Uh, what's Anna's best move? I'm not sure. I would go queen c2 here. This is what I would play. I don't like to take on e5 because I think black is getting so active. So queen c2, maybe queen b3. I don't know if there are some crazy ideas or playing for an attack. Uh, this looks crazy. I don't know if this is some crazy games f4 but I don't believe in this. Queen c4. We will have a check here trying, I don't know, check here. King f8. Could this no I don't and we go e5 this could actually be but yeah no 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 this, this is actually a way of playing but I would never play like this looks crazy no I think queen c2 for me is normal it could be queen b3 is also okay but you don't defend this pawn here so I'm a little bit maybe you go bishop c2 and you start planning to take here maybe not yet because yeah maybe this is fine bishop c4 and we put in pressure here so maybe queen b3 is a good move after queen b3 I'm just wondering what you can do yeah maybe queen b3 is a good move after here we want to put pressure here and you can go queen e7 um, I'm just queen e7 and just to remember that knight g5 here is not a good move because we have knight e5 we both defend and we are attacking the bishop so the knight needs to stay here so maybe in a position like this we will go but maybe knight e4 here would be fine so maybe queen b3 is the most tricky move I have no idea what is the best move here for uh, black to play I think queen b3 is the move I like actually because we are going to have some pressure here on e7 f7 so maybe this is what I like I have no idea bishop c7 queen e2 now the question is can we go knight e4 I'm just wondering we have knight b6 isn't this absolutely fine and now there are some tactics but this again this is so difficult so difficult why to, to play this and here we going yeah no but this is to 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 the I would say king h8 we can take here we go something like knight d3 and we are coming back here and maybe we can go I have no idea what is happening here now yeah if you take back maybe we will have what we have here now we have got this is so far away but this is a very very tactical way and so you're giving the two bishops and you're getting two pawns and a rook but you give the two bishops if you would give a bishop and knight hmm I'm not but it seems like this is fine but it gets very very tactical so I, I would say that I like queen b3 in this position I like queen b3 
more because we put some pressure on f7, but it might be that the game will become very tactical if we go queen b3 here. So queen c2 or queen b3 are those more I would like to consider. I would probably, queen c2 is what I think is so natural. If I would play this in a blitz, I would probably go queen c2, but queen b3 is maybe more active because we're looking at f7 here and we are trying to get some ideas, bishop c7, bishop c2, and queen is seven, and I'm just, but we need to go, I don't know, bishop f4, knight f4, I have no idea what is going to happen here. We will have now knight b6, and this looks absolutely, isn't this absolutely fine for black to play? I'm not sure, but we are getting this one, and after knight d4, we maybe want to start kicking. I have no idea what is happening here. This looks bishop b7, and we will have a position like this that I actually like quite a lot for white. So I would say queen b3 is the move I like most in this position. This is the board. This is absolutely what have happened. Anna took an e5, and her opponent took back with the bishop, and uh, I, just, I, I just like if Anna brings up her queen. Uh, this would be very passive mode. I don't like this. would be very slow. So queen c2 or queen b3. So because you want to put uh, the rooks active on d1, maybe with queen on b3 you took putting pressure on f7. So Anna is... Yeah, the opening is so important just to get the position you understand. So that's why the opening are very important. And now, of course, more than ever, they are so important, but it also depends on, on the level, I would say, for the world's best play or the spending very, very much time to, to of, in the, of their opening, so they will not get a too bad position in the opening. That could be, mean that they will not get into the opening. I would say that openings are very important, of course, also all part of the game are important. The most difficult could be actually the middle game and the end game. But by knowing better end games, you will also play the middle game better because you can always look for, and I remember one of the grandmaster who said that, I think it was um, Anton Korobov, that when he is playing, he always look for when he can exchange down to an end game. We don't have a position like this here, but this is something which is very good to consider all the time. So what will I expect? I am not, you know, Anna could take on e5. I don't like this move, but she could actually take on e5. And this is what she did. She is saying, no, I'm going to take the bishop pair here. But she took it and uh, she took the bishop pair. And I'm a little bit scared now here. I'm a little bit scared because knight e5 will absolutely come. There's no time to take on c5 because we have a piece here. So this is absolutely what will be coming. I guess we will have bishop b5, maybe. She can also go bishop c2. This she can also go. And after bishop a6, we go rook e1. And I'm just wondering, queen c7, this is getting a little bit scary for me. Knight g3, we are putting a rook here on d1. Where is this queen going? We need to go here somewhere. And I'm just, I'm just getting a little bit, a little bit concerned here now. Is this a fine move? Maybe this is just a bad move, but uh, I'm not sure. We can just see there's lots of activity here for black. So Anna took an e5, and yeah, uh, she wanted to say that no, I don't, I don't care about your bishop. After this, she can go bishop c2 or bishop b5. These are the two moves she can do. So everything else would be bad. Bishop b5. Maybe this is what she will play, and here we'll take here. And now I'm not sure. Maybe you will take back like this, and we have pressure here, so we will need to go f3. And Anna would say that I believe my bishop is very good in this position. Can we, after bishop, take d7 and play another way? You can play like this, and I'm just wondering what is going to happen here. I have no idea what is going to happen here, because can we play a move like this? But what does happen after queen b5? This is just getting a little bit scary here, bishop e3, and I don't know if what will happen. So her opponent will absolutely, her opponent is sitting. Ah, he's there. He's sitting at the board. Anna took an e5, and he will, I'm sure, he will absolutely take with the knight. He will absolutely take with the knight back. This is the active move. To take with the rook, that would be so strange, but he's taking a little bit of time, 
and yes, the field position, he will play knight take e5. This is absolute for sure because he's getting some time. He has given the bishop pair. He's not defending this. But if Anna go bishop b5, we will have bishop d7. And take here. I guess we will actually see maybe maybe he will take with the queen here. I don't know. Can we play a move like this? But could this, and we play the end game, we go f3 here. Could this be, uh, and then we have this. And rook here. This is, I'm just wondering how will a position like this be? Rook e8 and king f2. And after we have something like knight e5 and it's getting so tactical. It's getting so, so tactical. We need to play something like this. And I have no idea what is going to happen in a position like this. It's getting so, so tactical. We can see you have three pawns for the piece. So we have this at the board. Oh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Anna, she took on e5. She said, I want to have the bishop pair. I don't believe that your activity will compensate for the bishop. He took with a knight. This was absolutely a must move. This was absolutely a good move. But what is Anna going to do? She has two moves to choose from. She can go bishop c2 or she can go bishop b5. Actually, I believe, what do I believe Anna will go here? I think she will go bishop, uh, I don't know, bishop b5 is the most, uh, let's see, I think this is the most active move. She will go bishop b5, this is what I believe she will do. And bishop b5, bishop d2, and we will see this. And I think after this, Bishop d2, he seems to know so well what he's doing. So I think we will see this on the board. I actually think we will see this on the board, but I'm a little bit scared of this. And now queen b5, you have to come back. I'm, I'm just a little bit worried. What are we going to do here? But knight d4, even if this, this looks crazy, we're going, we're putting this into pin, but we dare to do it. After a move like this, we are going rook c8. Okay, uh, do you have some idea to, to make it? I don't know. Maybe we are just, and the knight is not going, and we can go. Maybe rook c6, or we can start playing like this. I have no idea what is happening here. This is just getting crazy. I'm far, far away from the game. Far, far. But Anna played bishop b5. This was what she played. She played bishop b5. And now I'm sure we will see bishop d7 on the board. Uh, Oh, what happened here now? It took a little bit of time. I wanted to refresh, but any other move, if you go something like here, I don't know, we will just take the queen. You see, bishop d7 is absolutely the only move she can play, the only move her opponent can play, because if you go rook f8, we will just take here on c5 with lots of threats. So bishop d7 will absolutely be on the board. And he has played it now already, bishop d7. And I would say that this is probably all has been played. And now I guess Anna will take on d7. And I don't know what is going to happen. But if she takes on d7, I just believe that her opponent will take with the queen. This is also the strongest move to take with the queen. And just so... Uh, so, but this is the position Anna played here. Bishop b5, bishop d7 was played. This was bishop d7 was played. It was just a must move. Otherwise, Anna would have an advantage. But black is playing with activity. Now, Anna will not be able to keep the bishop pair any longer. She will not be able to keep the bishop pair because after bishop a6, we can go something like queen b6. And this one is getting into problems. No, she needs to take on d7. This is the only thing real she really can do here. Can she go something else? Queen a4. No, I don't like queen a4. This could be just getting some problems. I don't know. Queen a4. Maybe we could go. I don't know. The queen here. What is happening here? This could be. And we have knight to e4. No, we need to keep the pawn on e4 also. So bishop d7 was played. This is the position Anna needs to take on d7 and I'm sure her opponent will play the best move take with the queen I think so
Um, it could be it could be that is Ivanchuk there on the left. Um, yes, it looks like Ivanchuk, Vasily Ivanchuk. He is born 69, I believe, something like that. He's around 55 player, 55 years old, and he's one of these fantastic players. Really, one of those. He is, and he has he played the last two years. Last year he was number one in the tournament. This year. He is number two in the tournament, and I think he has. No, I, I, I'm not sure what he did the last round, so I don't know how many points he has. But he's really a top seed player, and he is a legendary player, absolutely. Now he's playing. He's seeded number two in the tournament, and let's see. Anna went up, so there are some time going on her clock. There are some time ticking here. We will refresh this. This is the position. Anna is down to 14 7 minutes. Her opponent has like used only 13 minutes for the game. And yes, I have played in Vanshok several times. The last game I remember is actually when we play against each other in Gibraltar and it was a draw, so I was very, very happy with that. But I'm sure I lost against him also. And I might have played with him in some rapids too. So, uh, but I was very happy that I got to play him in Gibraltar. There are some years back, maybe three, four years back. And uh, uh, so, yes, yes, I have, I have actually played with him. So I have played with some of these top players who are about my gener generation or maybe a little bit younger, born in the 60s, 50s and 70s. But lots of those young, fantastic players younger I haven't played against but only some of these little bit older players so now Anna her opponent is just so fully concentrated sitting all the time while Anna went up I just hope she will come back uh, I just hope she will come back at any moment and here she is she is absolutely here now and her opponent play bishop d7 she will and these are actually the moment, moments which is a little bit tricky you're coming back after being away so you need a little bit to feel the position not play too quickly but anna needs to take on d7 this is absolutely the only thing she can do anything else would be problem because there is threat against this but this pawn is also hanging so she really needs to take on d7 and then, depending on what her opponent is doing, she can go bishop takes c5 or she can play the end game. But I think if she takes on, uh, I think if she takes on d7, uh, I think her opponent will play the best move. I think so. I have to take with the queen, which is the best move. Because if you play like this, we will take with the knight. Now we can go f3 and we are having a little bit more pleasant position because these things doesn't work any longer. This doesn't work at all. This actually doesn't work at all because the knight is defended. Sorry, sorry. It only, but without the queens. So she needs to take on d7. This is absolutely the best move. And uh, um, this is absolutely the best move. And... Um, after that, I would expect her opponent to take with the queen. If Anna goes something else, she will become worse because we see this pawn is hanging. We see it's absolutely is hanging. So, um, and taking here, you would also defend uh, the pawn on c5. So it's just, just one only move she has here. Anna, this tournament with about 400 players, Anna is rated 106. So if Anna would finish above among the first 100 players, I would say that she is, uh, that this would be fine. It would be a good result for her. And of course, it depends on how the, the games go. But, but I would say that if she finish among the first 100, if she will be a little bit plus, that would be absolutely good for her. So Anna, the last game, Anna, lost the first round, she won the second round, she lost the third round, she won the fourth round, and this morning she played a very, very long game, and that was a draw. So Anne has two and a half out of five, she has two and a half point out of five. And it was an amazing draw after five and a half hours. Such a long game. Anna is thinking long, but um, there, 
And I, I don't mind she's thinking here, but she really needs to take on D7. Anything else would just not be so good at all. So this is very, very important because this pawn on E4 is hanging. So she needs... In chess, yeah, in chess we have this, we have two classes. We have an open class, open for all players, but there is also a woman class. And the reason why there is still a woman class, there are still women tournaments, there are women titles, is to give the women double chances because overall there are about 11% women. So it's just a huge, huge difference on number of the players playing. And that's why uh, it's still it's it's still like that. And if you go back like 100 years in Sweden, they were actually creating a woman chess club. And the reason was that the women in the beginning of 1900 or in the end of 1800, they were not always allowed to go to the club. The, the chess club was in general for the men. So um, this is the reason why there are still these women titles, there are still women tournaments. And you can see that anytime when you organize a tournament, here we, here we could see Anna took on d7. I think her opponent will think a little bit, but I'm sure queen takes d7 will come because I believe that he, your, uh, Anna's opponent is still in, in the book. But what I wanted to say, that when you organize uh, tournaments for women, then you can see lots of women. But when you have these open tournaments, you will see some women playing, but there will be around maybe 15% will be a good number but they will not be a majority. So by organizing also uh, women tournaments, uh, you're letting the women sometimes be the big number in the tournament. So it's, it's a little bit a way of encouraging women to play. And we can see all the time there are more women playing, more women. And uh, I'm just very, very happy to see that. After taken with the queen, it could be taken on c5 is the best, but I don't know. Because after this, here now, this pawn is hanging. Uh, and now I'm wondering, can we go after f3? We have this. I'm just wondering about this trick here. What is happening? This is actually because we can see if the bishop move, we will take on e2. Is there? I have no idea. Maybe we have rook d1. I don't know what is happening here. Uh, we have this here and here and we have rook take f7 this would absolutely be uh, better for for this would absolutely be better for anna so rook d1 but if we just bring away the knight i don't know knight f6 how is this going to be uh, we have rook f3 rook e8 and we have king f2 so maybe this is just not anything to be scared of i'm not sure what is the best her opponent is thinking but after this i'm just wondering how is this position taking here and going f3. How is this position? I'm just, I'm just not sure how, how it will be here now, actually. So if you go something else, it's very good to keep the bishops. If white can keep the bishop here, uh, white would be a little better because this, the knights are short rank pieces. Even if white doesn't have both bishops, white has one bishop. And we remember with pawns on both sides, Bishop is normally stronger than a knight. Of course, there are, it depends on the exact position, but I would say stronger. But I'm a little bit worried. I'm just wondering, is this something to be scared of? Rook d1, this is what I'm wondering. Maybe knight b6 is the right move. Is it? And after right, coming here, because there is a mate here, and we can also go king f2, we can actually go knight g3. So this is not, I have no idea what is going to happen here. Knight c4, how is a position like this? King f2, and can we go rook e8 here now? And again, knight g3, what is going to happen? This is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. Rook d3, oh, I'm getting... This is, and if we take it like this, we will absolutely take it here, and we can see that this is a pin. And this h3 move has been good. There is no knight g4 check. So this is tactics. I think she should take, if you take with the queen, I think she should take uh, the queen and play this. But it's also, we are all different. Her opponent is thinking, uh, we are all, and I like to play the end games. So I would probably go for the end games after queen take d7. I would absolutely, I think I would go for the end games because I like to play them. And I like to see this bishop here against 
uh, the phone. And if you go here, and if you would play like this here, I guess, I guess B3 is a good move, or maybe Rook C1 could also be a good one. Probably Rook C1 is a better move, and just, just to have it. And we are planning F3 later on. This is some pressure here. Knight D3, I'm not sure this, or if B3 is the right move. It could be B3, but we have C4 here, and it's getting some tactics. So maybe, I'm not sure what is the best move in this position. Also, maybe Rook to D1. I don't know if you take it like this. Her opponent has taken, and he took with the queen. This was absolutely what I expected. This was what is should be the best. So I believe Anna should change here now that she should take on D7. She can go queen C5, but I just like to play endgame um, when you play against lower rated also, because I I've been playing for chess for 50 years, so I have played quite a lot of endgames. So I like it. I don't know about Anna, so it's a little bit about style. I believe Anna will go bishop takes c5. I think she will play bishop takes c5, but I think I'm a little bit scared of this bishop takes c5. And here, queen b5, I think is a good move because you have this. And now, I don't know, maybe knight e4 is what, what is the best to play here. I have no idea what is going to happen in a position like this. Can we go something like knight e4 and we will go queen d5 and we will have position like this. Can we maybe go something like queen f5 here? But you can just go queen e6. This is absolutely fine. But I would absolutely go for the end game to play with the bishop in the end game. I would take on d7. So this is the position Anna took on d7. Her opponent took back and I would absolutely now take on d7 to play this end game with the bishop. But it could be that after taking here, I'm not sure. Could it be that a knight f is better to take with? I, after this, I want to go f3 here. I want to play this move here, f3. This is what I want to do. And I'm just wondering how, how we have been looking at this all the time. And I'm just a little bit concerned of how this will be for Anna. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. If you go, I just wondering if you go here, we come here. If you go rook d1, can we go knight d1? But we have king f2 and we will play with a piece extra. We are also planning to go this move, knight c4. We can take on c5, we can go bishop c1 and knight g3 will be coming. This is not good. So I just think um, I would take, I just hope Anna take on d7. I think this is the best way for her to play this, to play with the bishop and uh, this is just uh, what I would like to. Also, it's because um, her opponent has active pieces. Her opponent has active pieces. So, um, and I like, I like this bishop in the end game, this bishop playing against one of the knights, and I just hope I can well get to use it. I, I'm not sure after this, if you go rook c1, maybe this is good because after knight d3, I wonder if we go rook c2, can we go rook d1? No, maybe you have c2. Maybe we will just come here and we will play like this. But what is this going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Now we have a pawn less. So what is happening here? We can go something like rook d1. We could play, but c4 coming probably this. So this would absolutely be uh, a little bit, but this is far away. I would just say that this, both of them, there are tactics here in this position, if Anna changed here. This is the position, so what more can she consider? One is to take on d7, one is to take on c5. I don't really see so many other moves for Anna. I don't see queen c2, I guess maybe we will go queen d3. This could be getting a little bit unpleasant. I don't know, one rook to c8, I don't know which one should be to c8. Knight e4. Uh, maybe now we will just have a pawn down and we will not get so much compensation for this. So, and maybe c4, no. So this is, no, queen c2 is not the move. Queen d3, this is a typical move to go. Queen d3, that you put in your queen, you want to get the knight here to d3. So, and also we have problems against e4. So I would just say taking on d7 is what I would like to play in this position. But I it's possible that Anna will take on c5. Uh, it's absolutely possible that she will take on c5. And I actually believe that this is what she's going to do. So is Anna on her way to move? Yeah, I say change pieces, exchange pieces, yes. <laughs> but uh, it's because it's the, 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 the translation for from Swedish. 
because we used the word. Uh, and she took on C5. She, t- she played, she took on C5. This moment a little bit scares me, uh, a little bit scares me, but it's still absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine to play this. But it means that after Queen B5, Bishop E3, Anna will absolutely, I don't know, Knight C4, if this could be some annoying moves, but maybe we go Queen D3, I'm just wondering, Rook to D8, now we have Knight D4. Yeah, this is getting fine. So maybe I have no idea, something like that, because after B3 we'll get the Rook. So maybe something, or oh, it's so, so getting so tactical, I have no idea. Rook to D8, we might go something to d4 but Anna played bishop takes c5 and uh, that was logical I think she will see queen b5 was absolutely played now Anna will need to go bishop e3 this is a very important move to play here bishop e3 she needs to play that that's absolutely the only thing she can play anything else would absolutely get her into problem if you go rook c1 we will see where we have this knight d3 and you know this we have knight d4 but you can go queen a6 and we see that all the pieces are getting lows here there are fresh against a2 the fresh against e4 and no i don't like this position so rook c1 is not a good move and we cannot go queen c2 because after queen c2 we have rook c8 and we see that this is a pin that would actually lose the piece so that's not possible bishop e3 i would say is the only move you can also go bishop d4 if you want to one of them but i wonder bishop d4 can we go something like rook d8 here and we have queen c2 yeah we could play like this so is this is it better to go with this rook here maybe and then we can go oh i have no idea queen d2 oh what is happening and we have maybe queen e3 and we are getting some uh we, we are it, it, it's still about equal here, absolutely. Mm. So uh, this is the position. Bishop d7 was played, queen takes, and no, Anna didn't do that. She played bishop takes c5, queen b5. This is the position. It's, it's, it's a little bit scary, but it should be absolutely fine. Anna needs just to come back with her bishop. I like bishop to e3. You're having the pieces closer to each other. And so this is what I really would like her to play. Anything else? Because this queen is good here. It's attacking here, but it's also looking at the knight on e2. And uh, Anna is down to 35 minutes, but they have played like uh, they have played like 18 moves. They have played 18 moves. And uh, here we can see some players looking at Anna's game. We have Vasily Ivanchuk here also, but I think he's fully concentrated in his own game. And we have some. It could be also spectators or players who have finished their game walking around or others who are still playing their game. So they have um, Anna, they get 90 minutes to play 40 moves and after when they have made 40 moves, if they manage to make 40 moves like Anna did in the, did in the morning game, Anna actually played very close to 100 moves. I think it was like 98, 99. And after 40 moves, they will get 20 minutes extra. And for each move they are making, they will also get, uh, for each move they are making, they will also get uh, half a minute extra. Mm. So uh, Bishop E3 is what I really hope Anna will uh, play here now this is yes such a good move to play I'm a little bit wondering uh, because now the normal is and I hope could this be a move I'm not sure it could absolutely be a move bishop d4 I'm just wondering are we scared of something here knight take e4 and we can see that the pieces are getting very active I don't know after this maybe we have knight d2 so this is a little bit yeah I guess this is why I like queen d3 here now, a little bit to pin the knight. And if you go something like this, I guess we will put the rook to d1. I'm not sure if it should be rook f or another king. I think it should be rook f d1. I like it better. So and this is it's a, because this pawn is, we stay with the pawn here. But this is absolutely equal in a position like this uh, because we have symmetrical pawns here. We have pawns on both sides, but I think black is quite quite active here, so it, it's about equal. Black will of course like to change one of the knights for this bishop. So this is the position. What will Anna play? She played bishop d4. 
Um, this is actually, um, yeah, she can play it, but I don't know. She wanted to, uh, oh, sorry, this is the position. It's like this, we have it here. I will just refresh. So Anna, she played, now we got it. We got another color. I don't know why it became like this. So Anna just played, uh, here we have it. And Anna just played Bishop D4. This is what she played here now. And I'm just wondering, is this something to be scared of? Um, I'm a little bit uh, concerned about this, but maybe this is okay. Uh, I don't know if this is okay. Maybe we have something, but I'm a little bit concerned of having the pin here. So let's see. And I play Bishop D4 and I'm a little bit worried about not this move because we can always go Queen to C2 and we are getting out. And after a move like this, she will actually, I don't know, she will actually have to go back Oh. So this is, I would say that the rook to d8 is a little bit scary in a position like this. Rook to d8 is a scary move here. And if you come here and you come here, we will not. If you come here, we will have knight to e4. And all of a sudden, this queen doesn't have good square. e2 is hanging. So I would say rook to a d8 is a very scary move to me. Rook to a d8, I don't know if we have time to make something slow here. We had queen c2. We could maybe make a5, but and if you take, I guess we will take with the rook. And how is a position like this? We will go queen a4, or we will go maybe rook a4. I'm just wondering. But after knight c6, this, well, ah, oh, it looks f. Yeah, now this looks so scary. I am so scared of the position now because I like rook a d8, and I really don't know how Anna is going to play after this move. This is just a very, very good move to go. Actually, with this rook, you can also go with that rook if you want to, because um, I, I, I simply don't know where she's good. But then maybe, do we have something? Then we have queen b3, because if you take an e2, we have this also. So this would actually be uh, a worse move. So rook a8, because after rook a8, this doesn't work, because if you take here, this one is defended, we can just take it back. So rook a8 is a very, very scary move here now. Her opponent has lots of time, has lots of time here. We, I will refresh it. Let's see this is position at the board. Her opponent has only spent like 18 minutes while Anna is down to 33 minutes. So uh, her opponent can absolutely play knight, took e4. And uh, this, what, this is actually, hmm. What is she going to do here? Because next move will be rook d8. And if we go something rook c1, we will have rook d8 here. And I'm a little bit, what is happening? Now we have queen c2. We are putting some pressure on e4. And this is getting, this is absolutely getting fine now. This is getting fine. If you go something like knight c6, we will just, we will actually grab it. You see, I'm so tired. I am so tired here. And there are some tactics which are good for white. So, uh, this is so her opponent now after this is the position at the board we I make refresh again after bishop d4 i would say that this is a move that scares me after knight e4 i'm not so scared any longer because we can go maybe rook c1 can we play this move i'm not sure if this is good no there are some tactics here <gasps> there are some tactics i have no idea what is happening here now oh knight g5 <gasps> this is yeah scary so oh Knight took e4, so rook c1. And is this some tactics now to be scared of? No, it's not, because we have knight g3, and we can see this one is defended by the knight. But there is so, so I would say this position is a little scary for me. It's scary. Both, if you go off the queen here, I just think queen c2 is just such a normal move to play queen c2 but it's not a good move to play queen c2 looks so normal but you have this knight f3 and this is just such a scary move i don't know if you can go something like that but then we just can take away one of the knights so here i would say yeah i'm a little bit worried here i'm both for i actually most worried for this but also knight to take e4 is scaring me here but 
I, I am, you know, I'm a person that I, I get very nervous when Anna play. So of course, if I see if there are some tactics against her, I'm so scared she will get into it. It's so much more nervous to see, to watch her playing than when I play myself, because when you play, you get focused. You don't know what's happening around. You just concentrate on your game. But when I am sitting and when you sit and when you look at the board from the side, you are you normally could see more. And what did he play? He played his rook a d8. And this is a move that scared me very, very much. This is a move that scared me very, very much. And I think, yes, queen c2 could be coming, absolutely. But after rook c8, Anna will need to go here. And I'm just wondering, can we play this move here? But no, now we have queen b3 and we have this. But all these tactics, how can we be able to control everything like this. This is threatening here, threatening here. So we need to go queen e3 and to play this position. There is so many tactics. He played rook a d8 and now queen c2 is maybe the best move. You can also try to go a4. After a4, I don't know what uh, or will do, but probably queen a6. And can we now try to go some f3? I have no idea. Knight c6 and what this looks actually sc very, very scary to play. Can we go queen d2? I have no idea. You're coming here. Can we go queen e3? Ah, oh, perhaps finally we will do that. So in a position like this, but a4, after a4, I guess we will see this. Maybe we should take with the rook. And now knight c6, could this be something to be scared of? Did we have this? We have also rook b3. I have no idea what is happening here. And after a move like queen a4, I guess we can go rook d3 and we will change some pieces. So white is having, so her opponent played rook d8. And here, I, I guess Anna will play queen c2. This is the move I think she will play, queen c2. It looks like very logical move. And here I would be very scared after this that she will need to come back after knight to take e4 here now. She will need to play something like this just to play this but what is going to happen here this is just crazy we can actually if you take here i don't know i don't know if you take here we will maybe have some problems here bishop take e5 and we have knight take f4 yes you see it. so many tactics all the time chess is like this so he played this very very uh, tricky move rook to d8 and i am a little bit scared here now i'm scared uh, because this was, if you put the rook on the, this was absolutely the best one and a very logical one. This rook is active, looking at defending e5, looking at e4. This rook on a8 was passive. So instead of taking a pawn, he played his rook to d8. Yeah, yeah. So queen c2 is probably the best and here, but here you need to go back. And this is very, very difficult to go back. So you have given this move for, uh, you have given these moves for free. So, and if you have rook date, we have this still queen b3 and we are getting into the game. After a move like this, I think we should put something on d1, one of them. I'm not sure which one we should go. No, maybe not. Maybe we need d1, this one is hanging, sorry. We need to go queen e3 here. So let's see. So Anna, her opponent now play rook d8. And this is a little bit, um, I'm a little bit uh, scary now to play this position. Uh, this is a little bit scary because there is a pin. And you know, you don't want to play something like that because you have knight e3 and you go somewhere here and then you will go, maybe you will take on e4 and all of a sudden you see all these pieces, these two knights, this and two rooks, all of them are playing and this is very low, everything is very low. This will looks very, very bad for, and it might be that you're threatening also just to take on f2 here. Now this is very, very scary. So uh, it's absolutely very, very scary here. Rook d8 was played, this is the position and I'm, yeah, it, it's, I, I just don't like this pin here. 
and this queen can't go way too far because the knight is hanging. Rook e1 is not a good move because we have knight e3. We will just have to come back. And if you don't have anything else, we can always play. Maybe to take on b2, but probably we will just take on e4. Maybe with a knight, maybe with a rook also. I don't know why can't we play just yes, take with the rook. Oh, we have bishop take f6. So knight take e4 is a normal move. And we have this position again with all the pieces getting close. So here it is. So Anna will play. I think Anna will play queen c2 here. This is what I think she will play. And uh, I think she will play queen c2. And I also hope she will play queen c2. I just believe this is uh, the best way she can do in this position. And we're not scared of anything like this. This for absolutely yes. I think we go f3. We are keeping our extra pawn. And we want to have the end game. This is what we want to have. But after queen c2, her opponent can push her again. And now Anna will need to come back here. She will need to come back. So this is the position and Anna is thinking, we can see that she is thinking here. I will just refresh so we get the board. Here it is. Uh, we will get the board here in this uh, position. And so there are some, uh, this is, you know, going F3, I would say would be as yes, very, very dangerous here. This would be so dangerous. I have no idea. Can we, can we defend against it? Because there we, we go here and after we would actually, we need to go, ah, queen d2, we have this. I have no idea on what would be happening here. We have rook fd1 and we have a mate on the last rank. So uh, this, but after something like that, I don't know what is going to happen here. This is not, and we have this coming. This is so, so scary. Now this is very, very scary. Knight eight is a very good move. And I would just show you this, why this is not working, because we have this. And after this, we can play rook c8. We have knight e8. We come here. But next move will be, uh, so you will have to come here. We will go rook d8. And we will actually, no, we will have a pawn more. So I'm not sure how you will try. Maybe you will come here and we will play this position. And we have it like this. And we have a pawn more with... Um, with black, uh, white, but you will go and take this pawn. So I, I guess we will try to play against the king. I don't know, really. We will try to play against f7. This is what we want to do. So, but this is very, very far away. This is very far away. But I, let's see. So sorry, we will refresh. We will get the position. Here it is. Here we have the position. Rook a8 was such a good move. And I just hope Anna will go queen c2, that she will play that. And then I think we will see rook c8, and she will need to go back again. Uh, uh, to have double rounds in open tournaments is becoming more and more popular. And it's a way to, to make the tournament shorter. So it's a way to make the tournament shorter. So I would absolutely say that it's becoming more and more popular and there are also tournaments where they even play nine games in maybe uh, five di days they have uh, four d double rounds and one single round but that's very very exhausting but some people like to play a lot of chess I wouldn't manage it I am very very careful playing double rounds I think it's just so so tough to play them yeah but in this tournament there are two double rounds and uh, it's just to make it shorter. For to be away for nine games, nine games in nine days, is quite a long time when you are an amateur player. So that's what they have done. They put on two double rounds, so at least it only will be a week away from work or whatever. So. <clears throat> and Anna is a little bit like falling asleep here. But this, she has a pawn up, but this pin is very, very nasty. This pin is very, very nasty. And it's very important that after queen c2, if you go rook here and if she, she has to come back. And if you go something like knight e4, maybe we can, I don't know if we can rook c1. I'm just wondering, rook d8, maybe this is absolutely fine. And we have queen c2 because we're putting some pressure here and we're getting out of the pin. But knight d3, what is happening? Knight d3, oh, this is getting crazy. 
but we are getting some activities and this is still defending so this might be still absolutely uh, fine to play so but it's it's sometimes it's fine sometimes not and i was not happy anna went for this position i didn't like that she took the bishop because this is what black wanted to play so let's see this is position she needs to go queen c2 she really needs to go queen c2 here i would say a4 is another move and uh, to play but i think this is this is actually getting a little bit scary with knight c6 here uh Ah, but maybe now, yeah, yeah, no, we don't have, uh, I'm just wondering, do we have some tactics here, maybe, can we play queen a4 here, no, this is not, I'm just wondering, bishop take f6, what is happening, rook take e4, and queen here, and we are going to have this mate, oh, this is a tremendous mate. So you can see there are always danger a lots of things here. So a4 now I as like queen c2, but I would say that after rook d8 to find queen d1 is not so easy, but it's the only move and it's quite clear that you only have two moves, either queen d2 or queen d1, but this is a better one. So after here you will get some time, you will get some time to get out with your pieces. Yes, I also hope Anna is not falling asleep, and I'm sure she's not. She is just feeling the uh, pressure here. So she, um, uh, it, it, the position is about equal if Anna plays the best, but there is this pin which is quite annoying. If Anna could play nah, queen to e3, Ah, maybe not even that will help. Yeah, maybe I think that would not even that would help actually. I think everything it's just her pieces are a little bit awkward. So queen c2 is the way to get out of this, and then I'm sure her opponent will uh, threaten her with the rook. This is what I, I believe he will do, and she will needs to come back. And I think that her opponent is still in the book. I think this is theory. I don't know this if it's theory, but the way he has played this, he played this quite quickly. I think he knows this position. He might even have had this position before, but I would believe that this p position has been played. And uh, uh, absolutely, I, I, I would believe so. And here we have Yuan Yatasan walking behind, so fully concentrated on his game, so fully concentrated, like lots of players are, and some like to walk around, but even if they walk around, they are thinking of their own games. You know, some players, they are very, they play the same openings all the time. So we saw a slab. It could be that uh, Anna went into an opening prep. Her opponent didn't have so much time, but he had like an hour to prepare it. But it could also be that he has been playing these things. So he knows this very well. He has been, this is very, very familiar to him. He has played this uh, line before because it looked like, he you know, all, all the way to play this. Yeah, this is true. The problem is, if Anna didn't, if Anna would have had uh, uh, somehow her pieces in better places, it would be very good to have this bishop, because white uh, black doesn't have a bishop. The problem is that we see all her pieces are tied uh, down here. The knight needs to defend this. The queen is standing in a pin, and the queen doesn't have. But at the same time, the queen needs to defend the knight on e2. So all the pieces are very very uh, passive here on the first rank. And we can see Anna is sitting, but also her opponent is also sitting all the time. Anna is down to 20 minutes, and that is what's worrying me because she will, uh, she, she will absolutely be in time travel. She will absolutely be in time travel at any moment. And here, I think we have one of the young Icelandic player, one of the young Icelandic player passing by. Well, actually, I think it's Vatnar. I'm, I'm not sure about his last name, but he's getting maybe close to 20 years old. And behind Anna, we can see uh, Johan Jartersson is playing against this young Indian player, and the, he is sitting there. They are sitting there both, and behind this young Indian player, his name was Sustant. I think the uh, last name was Sustant. We can also see Vasily Ivanchuk playing there. And I don't know who is the opponent of Vasily Ivanchuk. It looks like Vasily Ivanchuk also then has four points. L let's see if Anna will play Queen C2. I really hope she will do that. 
I think she really ho I really hope she will play Queen C2. This is just such an important uh, move to play. I don't see any other way because uh, there might be, um, yeah, what I think yes, Knight C6 is what is coming here now, and this will just get Anna into very very scary pin so and we don't want to go queen d2 because you will take up the queen d2 you will be able to take here with a fret queen e3 we will just go i don't know maybe knight c6 there are frets everywhere so this would actually lose a piece this would actually lose some material i don't know can we do something like knight f6 maybe queen d2 and we see how i don't know this is just getting maybe we can just take on e2 and we've taken d4 and we will have uh, we will have like this we will have two pieces and here with the rook black will absolutely be better because white has not got a pawn white needs to have a pawn to play against the two pieces and also it favors it favors actually black that the rooks are still on the board so good back let's go back so i don't want her to go uh, this is here this is the position so i really want her to go queen c2 and after queen c2 i really hope she will play that anna is just yeah it's getting so exciting but it's because we can see that her opponent is getting the good openings the opponents is getting the position they want to have and Anna is therefore she will have uh, let's see let's see the time if the time is correct here Anna is about 18 minutes her opponent has like one hour 10 so it's not uh, it's not uh, it's, it's it's just uh, I don't think she forgot about the clock, but she feels that this is just uh, dangerous, and it is dangerous here. Rook a8 was a very good move, and I'm a little bit. I would have wished Anna would have gone back with the bishop to e3, that she would have gone back with the bishop to e3 instead. But this is still fine. But she needs to find queen c2. Maybe a4 is possible, but I like queen c2 best. I really liked it better because if you go something like this, we can maybe take it absolutely. But I wonder if you go here and we come here and we go queen c2, could b3 be a move here? Yes, then we have b3. So this is actually not the move I would really like to play. I like queen c2 here, absolutely. This is the move I really hope she is going to play in this position. But Anna is still thinking, uh, Anna is still thinking here uh, and she really needs to get out of the pin in some way. And she has a pawn up, but this pawn is under attack. But more important is that I, this is one of the important things is this very very unpleasant pin and the queen would like to step away but at the same time you need to defend this knight on e2 and yeah this is the sixth round and of course it's very tiring for Anna she played five and a half hours the first game I don't understand how she has energy to play this she must be so exhausted and uh, and so and now also again once again she's getting under pressure and she was under pressure before but she can get out of the pressure but she needs to find some good moves i would believe if she find rook c8 this is queen c2 this is the only move i really like you can go a4 but after a4 queen is six i'm not sure what are we going to do here now I'm just getting very concerned here in a position like this. Maybe we can do something like this, but I am getting so scared. Can we play this and queen e3? Can we, yes, maybe this is absolutely fine to play, but I'm getting a little bit scared of this position to play. So, and what if we go f3 now here? No, this, we have knight c6. Can we go queen d2 here? This, we have actually queen b6. <gasps> We have queen b6. What is happening here? Rook fd1. And what is happening? We can take here. Knight takes. And we have some fireworks here. And in the end, there will be a pawn up for white. Because we see this pin there. Oh, this is too much. This is absolutely too much. So this is just what tremendous move. So I'm just wondering. No, A4, I don't want. I just want Anna to go. It could be that she go F3, but F3 is so, so dangerous. F3 is so, so dangerous because you are open up for the pin. After knight C6, what are we going to do? I, I don't know. After queen D2, this is actually the winning move. Maybe also this is actually the easier way to play it. 
and now whatever we're doing rook d81 we have knight e3 no we don't have it so maybe rook a1 could be possible but can you play it like this and we will see there will be so many pin pins everywhere so no don't play queen c2 is what i want to see on board i really want to see this is such an important moment sorry this is such an important moment anna is going to play now she's on her way to play can we see queen to c2 no she played queen to d2 and this is a mistake queen to d2 is a mistake uh she won because this queen doesn't have any good uh places to go to after the queen to d2 this is going to get very very dangerous also we have knight c6 here we have f3 and there are pins everywhere so queen d2 was not the move i liked she is still standing in the this i i expect her opponent to go knight c6 and after that i think anna will absolutely be in big big problem you cannot go queen e3 because we have rook take e4 so queen d2 this anna is now in a very dangerous position she's in incredible dangerous position now and uh but this is what happens she's tired she probably i don't know if she if she forgot about this and uh i don't know how now because she needs to go f3 and i think she has the but also queen b6 is fine everything here is actually now winning you can go here we have queen b6 we have rook d1 and after i don't know how we can play here now we maybe we need to go here because after rook d1 we have rook c1 rook d8 and we have rook c4 but her opponent if her opponent know this position i am sure her opponent will find the right way i'm actually sure that anna is going to have a tough time here i thought maybe knight e4 is uh is the best way to play i don't know can we go something like queen f4 no we have knight d3 or knight g6 there will be pieces falling everywhere now this is not possible so queen d2 was very very dangerous move and i'm getting now i'm getting nervous because if her opponent played the right way anna will get into huge huge problem so her opponent can go either to go for the pin knight c6 or to play knight take e4 both of them and the problem with knight take e4 if we go queen e2 we go knight e3 and no knight e3 is fine so what is happening here no we have this this is what we have been looking at and uh, i don't know this this is actually maybe the only way to play maybe we can go knight g5 directly but here we get the chance to get into the game so let's see uh but so after queen e4 queen c2 it could be anna still in the game here absolutely her opponent needs to find this tremendous uh, tremendous move this is actually a tremendous move i'm wondering if you give a check here king h1 what will happen here we probably have uh, we can actually just take here and after a check like this and if you give a check we will actually stay with an extra piece so it's not the end of the world but i am most scared of uh, queen d2 i think the idea is to go queen c2 here and but i think her opponent will play this move and now i don't know how anna is going to handle this her opponent what happened here her opponent took on e4 anna played queen c2 immediately and the question is uh we will the question is there is only one good move one move which is actually uh he played here queen c2 and it depends on will he know this position if he knows this position he might play this tremendous move that is actually giving such an advantage and is this here and knight g5 this is so cruel i don't know what what is going to happen here bishop e3 is he going to play this i have no idea what is happening knight f3 here can we go king here or we're getting and we have queen b7 you can see how this poor king needs to get out this is just so so scary can we try to bring a rook here maybe rook here now maybe we will get some way to defend this but this is just so so scary if he finds it but i don't think he will find it if he doesn't know it if he plays this i would say knight take e4 queen c2 it's only uh if he knows this uh this is absolutely the only way because this could absolutely be one of the traps here and here we have vasily ivanchuk coming he's coming and looking at the board he didn't do that before but he's looking at the board 
And he's one of those incredible players, of course, very, very strong, but also one of those who has a very, very special memory. And so he, he remembers lots of lines, and this is also why he has a very universal play. He can play all kinds of openings, and his understanding is tremendous. So here we have the position on the board. I just would wish that uh, I, wa I watch you. Yes, I need some water here. <laughs> I would wish that the opponent didn't have so much time here, but uh, if he doesn't play anything else than knight f3, Anna will absolutely be in the game. If he goes knight f3, I would say it's because he knows this move. I cannot see where he's looking at at the board. The, the idea with Anna is that she's attacking this knight here. If you play something like knight c4 here, Anna can absolutely be in the game. This wouldn't be such a problem you go rook eight. i guess we, we can just uh, this is is this oh i don't know we have this and we should also remember if you go something like here we have queen e2 and it's getting everything fine so it's just very very knight e4 uh, so knight e4 take queen c2 and will he now play the right move there is a tremendous attack but this is not easy to find knight g5 and here and in this position uh, he can go rook eight. I don't know knight took f3 and her king Anna's king doesn't have any square and the problem is queen b7 if Anna had a rook on c1 she could go queen c6 stop this diagonal it would be fine but now you are threatening your mate and she needs to get out here with the king to g3 and this is just very very scary this is very very scary so let's see uh let's see we have here now uh this is position at the board this is the position at the board what will her opponent play here now uh actually because now anna is her plan was to uh get the knight to e4 so she can attack it there is no time for rook eight because she will grab the knight this is absolute what she wants to we, we can actually yes maybe we can play something like this but I am I have no idea what is going to happen here now what is happening here in a position like this oh there are some tactics oh there are some tactics with a4 oh this is and the idea is if you take here we will take and take and we will probably take on a7 and we have this pawn and we have the bishop we remember what we said the bishop is so good i guess we know now we go bishop d4 of course so and if you're coming back here we will probably just start walking with this or maybe go bishop d4 but we have the bishop so which is much stronger than the knight so it depends on here how her opponent will play if he doesn't play knight f3 i would say anna is absolutely in the game but if he play, find this way of sacrificing a piece, blowing up the position, and I think he will only do that if he knows this position. Anything else? I don't know. Can we do something like queen d3 here now? Uh, yes, we can take here and here, but I guess we will just go. Maybe we will just kick this uh, knight here somewhere. You need to go away, and we will just, uh, we will go rook d2. We are, yeah, this. And we, we still have a mate here. I just want to show it. It's a mate here the, on last rank. So this is absolutely still possible to play rook d2. And next move will be bishop e3. And with the bishop, you will absolutely be fine here. Uh, white will absolutely be fine in this position. So uh, let's see. Her opponent is spending lots of time. I am so scared here because he has played so confidently. He has played so well all the time and he has shown that he's know this position he knows this very well does he know it all so here because then this will be so so scary and the problem is after a move like this here knight g5 we have a double we have frets against f3 and h2 but we also threaten to take on e2 i don't know king e2 but maybe we can go something like rook e2 
and we we are getting a very very scary position here i don't know queen d7 could be possible no we just take on g5 but yeah not this but we will have maybe something different maybe we can try to save as in the end game and this we would actually do the end game are possible but so it could be king g2 but after king g2 i'm just wondering maybe you have rook c8 and the idea is to get the king here to f7, queen b7, and can we go queen f5? No, we cannot do because we have g, knight g1. There is so much, but we have this queen d7 and knight g1. We are defending everything and queen take d4. And we have equal number of uh, material, but you see this poor, poor pawn structure and the knight on e1. This will absolutely be uh, very nice for black to play white will be absolutely suffering in this position but it's not over yet but let's go back let's go back so it means that if he plays this crazy sacrifice which is so strong anna is not over yet anna will have to fight but she doesn't have so much time it, mm, uh, she only have like 14 minutes and it's uh, uh, th the reason why she has been playing slowly is because the opponent has got the game into what he wanted. He has steered the game into position he knows well. And we can see that, that he has played everything very quickly. He took on e4 quickly. Um, I was wondering because also knight c6 was a good move. I would have been considered knight c6 actually uh, also. But he played this here. And if you go something like knight d3 here now, yes, we go as yes, rook f1. And where is this knight going? It doesn't have any good square to go to. So, okay, you will just kick it back. So this is not a possibility. So let's see what he will play here. I think that Anna is very scared of this and queen g5 check. But actually here, king h1, she is still in the game because she's threatening to take the knight and after a move like this she can take here and check and here and she's actually and after a move like rook take d4 we we ask a rook a d1 we just keeping everything and after a check we are defending everything we don't take it back because after taking it back this would be a perpetual this would absolutely be a perpetual here now so let's go back Will he find this tremendous move? Will he find this tremendous move? And here we have, I think, uh, the French player Hules Moussard. I'm not sure if I pronounce this correctly. He's one of the top players. He's actually one of the three with uh, four and a half out of five. He's really in the top. And he was standing there looking at the game a little bit and then he walked away. And, uh, and here we see both of them thinking so much both of them to fully concentrate will he find this fantastic move it's not over yet but it will blow up anna's position will he find this it's getting just so uh, crazy if he will do that but i really hope he will not play it if you play anything else if anna has time to get now she threatened to take the knight let's say we go knight f6 here i think we can go Maybe can we go rook a d1? I'm not sure. Rook c8, what will be happening? We have queen f5. Oh, this is getting. And what is happening? Rook f1. But are we scared to play this position? I'm wondering how we should play. Maybe we should play like this. And this is actually possible to play here. Rook, I wonder, rook c1, we are having some. We're not fretting mate because after the check here, we will escape coming out here this is far away this is far away let's go back to the let's go back to the position so anna played queen c2 and he is thinking here now he's thinking and he's moving thus he he's still fully concentrate and i i think he knows that there is something that i think he knows this but so but it's because i have this worried character but he's not he has known this so well and i would guess that this still could be in a book that this could be one of the traps actually uh, the, the, here so because knight e4 was a good move but also white black could have played another move than he did he could have gone knight c6 which actually scared me a lot 
too. So here is this very, very exciting moment. It's a very, very exciting moment. Uh, will he find the right move? There's only one move for black in this position. If he doesn't find it, Anna will be completely, completely fine. If he finds this, it will be so, so dangerous. But her opponent will have to keep on playing the best move, in, keep on playing well after that. So I'm wondering if he is a tactical player. If you are a tactical player, you would absolutely look for this. Even if you don't know this, you would look for this and you would love to, to bring up the king uh, out on the board. So if you're a tactical player, and then we could see with the bishop on e3, there would be no problem. But with the bishop on d4, on e3, it would absolutely be no problem. But with the bishop on uh, d4, the, we have this tremendous, uh, uh, we have this way of bringing the knight to g5. It could be also going knight g5 directly, but going knight f5 directly, I think we just can uh, take this. Can we do something else? Maybe, I think we should maybe do something like this, queen take here, and maybe go knight g3. After a moment like rook c8, maybe we go queen b3, or maybe queen a4. We are putting some pressure. a5, can we go maybe a3, or maybe we will play this. And maybe we'll play this. And this is just what I want to show, that in a position like this, white will be better because the queen is good with the knight. The two rooks are not so good with the knight. So white will maybe be a little bit better in this position. Even if it's equal pawns, you will need to defend this pawn. Uh, I don't know, maybe rook c5. Th there could be some threats here. I don't know. After rook c5, we maybe have queen d7. But this is far away. But I wanted to be to, to remember that we have this position, her Anna is, Anna is uh, taking some water, her opponent is thinking so much, and I'm just so worried about knight f3. If her opponent play knight f3, this will be so, so scary, but anything else, she will be in the game, absolutely. And so Anna played this beautiful open, Reykjavik open, which has been held for 60 years. And Anna is, uh, she played here last year. She played here also two years ago. So she has been playing in Reykjavik open several times. And it's just such a beautiful tournament, absolutely. And it's 400 players, that's so amazing. 400 players playing in this tournament. And I am, um, so it's just just such a beautiful tournament and we have all kinds of plays we have amateur we have the strongest very very strong plays we have also legendary plays we have streamers and it's such a huge huge open anna has two and a half out of five exactly like her opponent her opponent actually took a bye this morning so he should have more energy than anna who played the game five and a half hours she played such a long game this morning it was five and a half hours and she was the last to finish and the finish with only the kings on the board and she only had a little more than an hour an hour and half or hour 20 minutes i think hour and 15 actually to um get new energy to eat and rest and to think of what she will play in the game so she had just yes, so little time to just yes, be ready for the next game and here what will her opponent play He's so focused, he's so thinking, he has like 53 minutes, so he can spend lots, lots of time, he can do that. We see some players there behind, we see some players, I don't know exactly who they are, but they're watching at Anna's game because they believe there are some, they, they think it's such an exciting position, and it is such an exciting position. And this was actually what I was worried when Anna a long time ago decided to go for the bishop. Long time she did, before she died, decided to go for the bishop. And what her opponent got was so much activity. She could keep the level, but I couldn't see any way for her to getting out for a better position. Uh, it was about level. Maybe if Anna brought the bishop to e3, but I think it would have been level anyway. So... Uh, after she took that choice, her opponent find the best moves. I think he knows this position very well. And the question is, there is a very strong move in this moment, but if he doesn't play this, Anna will absolutely be 
in the game. She will absolutely be in the game. Uh, no, I never met uh, the boaters. I have followed them, I've seen their streams, but I actually never have, have met them. Hmm. So, oh, it's so exciting. Let's see, we can see, is, has Anna, I think Anna is now seeing this. And this is the question, if you play this knight f3, but we will just wait to see. If it was Anna to move here, she could play bishop b3, or she could go maybe rook f1. I was just believe that after a move, rook f1 would it still be a danger. I don't think so. I don't think it will be still a danger if she, Anna would manage to go rook f1 and the opponent play the same idea. I don't think so, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's see, he is so fully focused. Anna, they are both sitting there. It's such a drama and chess is so beautiful. It's such a drama, but it's all very quiet. It's all on the board. And when chess players play in a tournament, you can feel the energy from the players when they are thinking. So they're actually warming up the playing hall. And I myself, I'm so happy when we have a playing hall which is not too warm, which is not too hot, because it will be warm up with the players. Absolutely, it will be warm up by the players. So, um, what will he play? Will he find this fantastic move, this fantastic peak sacrifice? With a rook on d1, it wouldn't be such a danger. But the problem is, after this move, I will not put it on the board. We have seen it before. Uh, it's very, very hard to find. And with the rook on d1, but the problem is that there are threats against e2. There are also threats, uh, uh, there are threats against, uh, threats against e2, and there's also threats against uh, other pieces. And I was just wondering if you go here, here, knight g5, if you go king here, can we go queen d7? Is this a possibility to play? No, we have rook h1 and we keep everything under control. So this absolutely. And after queen d5, we are putting, I think we, what we do here, we have queen d3. Oh, there's so many and we are just staying, staying alive here. This is absolutely okay to play. I have no idea what happened after move like rook e6 here. Maybe we have h4 and rook g6 and we probably just grab it and we will escape with the king to f1. This is far away. So it means that even if he, has he played? No, he hasn't played. He is thinking, but it looks like he's on the way to move. It looks like he's on the way to move because he is a little bit moving. Could it be that he will play the move here now or that he will play his move here now? And uh, it's very difficult to see where he's looking at the board, if he's looking at the middle, if he's looking at the king side. But it's very important that when you play that we look at the whole board. Sometimes a piece coming from one part of the board could be very useful in the other part of the board. I would actually say that after this move here, knight g5, I would say king g2 would maybe be the best chance to play rook c8 and now to play maybe queen b3 to play this position here. I would actually say that this could actually be the best chance to play this. But this is just very, very tough to play. Uh, I, I just don't know. We have queen f5, some threats here. We will, I don't know. We have f4. Oh, this is so many things happening here. This is so crazy, everything. But it's not over yet. It's absolutely not over yet. So even if you find this fantastic move, it's not over yet. But I would say that after take here, if this comes 95, Anna will absolutely not. I think she will go here. It could because she wants to keep materia. But this would absolutely be a killing because you have this strong, strong move and you need to run out with your king. And here I'm just getting after rook e6, we might have knight f4. And if you go something like here, now we are getting into the game. So this is not the right way, but maybe, sorry, but maybe h5 could be be refreting this. Can we go h4? And now rook d6. Can we go something like knight f4? I have no idea. And queen d7, and we see we have queen c8, sorry. 
we have queen the seven and queen g4 is coming this is getting crazy this is getting crazy so i'm so this is so this is what i just believe that if he sacrifice and i will need to give the piece back and play with a bad pawn structure but just try to see that if she can save the game like that It's not, I would say, if you don't know it, it's very difficult to find. Strong place will find it, tactical place will find it. But if you're not, if you are, if, if you are a more positional player and you don't know the sacrifice, it's not sure you will, um, you will find it. And that is actually the only way to create a problem for Anna. Anything else, she will absolutely be in the game. So it's not strange that Anna allowed this because it's just not easy to see and she thought this was a good way of getting to the queen to see to with a threat and it's actually because now she's threatening if you are coming back knight f6 we can probably just go i don't know rook a d8 can we do that and rook c8 and we can go maybe queen f5 yeah this is what we were looking at um before absolutely so mm. So let's see, has he played? No, he hasn't played. Will he play? I think he's calculating. He is looking, he's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. Oh, I'm so getting, uh, I'm getting uh, worried. Will he play it? But it looked like he was shaking his head. So I just hope he will not play that. They will play something else. So we will keep on this very, very exciting game here. So Anna Tomo would go something like Rook C1 or Rook D1, probably Rook D1. No, Rook C1 would actually also be a good move to play if it was Anna Tomo, because you would control this diagonal here to C6. So Rook e D1 is also a good move. The Rook C1, if it was Anna Tomo, but the problem is that it's black to move in this position. Anna is down to 14 minutes. Her opponent has been spending for first time. He has been spending, could it be 15 or 20 minutes? He has been spending quite a lot of time. He took very quickly on e4. I was a little bit surprised he did it so quickly, but uh, maybe I'm not sure if that was the best or go knight c6. I just thought he had this very, very pin, which was just so scary to play against, but maybe knight took e4 was the strongest move. But if he finds the following up here, then this was a good move. But I would maybe have gone for knight c6 because it looked like uh, black would get into an endgame with rooks and a pawn up and a queen on the board. That would have been, uh, an Anna would have been fighting there. But we still have this, uh, if, if, if we still have this, if you find the right move, yes, Anna will have to fight. She is really have to fight. And Anna is having two and a half after five games. This is the sixth round. They are playing double round today. Anna is exhausted. She played such a long game in the morning. She is also playing here. And like in the morning, her opponent got the position he wanted. Today also her opponent got the position he knows well. And the question is, does he know the position even more here? Does he find one very strong move? If he doesn't play it, Anna is absolutely in the game. If he plays the strong move, it's not that Anna is not in the game but it won't be very dangerous for her. It will absolutely be very dangerous for her. And Anna was the last to finish today. She played five and a half hour. All other games were finished. And in the last position, there were only the kings left on the board. So her open is down to 43 minutes. I'm just hoping that he will uh, that he will keep on thinking and that he not he's shaking his head so it could be that some of his plans is not working the way he wants to but he is looking and it could be that he feels that there's something but he's not sure about it i also hope his her opponent will spend half an hour more get down to 10 minutes and then it's so much easier to make mistakes in this position in this position in any kind of position so absolutely so 
but here he is thinking and we see there are lots of games going on today they started this round at four o'clock Icelandic time five o'clock CET time they have played the game for two and a half hours Anna has only 14 minutes left here her opponent has more time and we can see Anna's looking at the score sheet and when you have a classical game like this is you need oh he played knight f3 he played knight f3 this was the good mom this was the good mom yes he played it and uh, let's see Anna needs to take it there is nothing else she can do because if uh, there's nothing else she can do uh, if she moves away the king her opponent will win a piece so she will absolutely have to take it and let's see what her opponent will do so she will have to take it and uh, I just hope uh, she will absolutely have to take it so he played his knight f3 yeah this was very very sad to see maybe he find it maybe he knew there was something let's see if he plays the best way afterward after Anna needs to take it because it's a fork she is a check fretting here so she needs to take it and now in this position her opponent need to go uh, I don't know can we play something rook c8 I don't think so. but knight g5 is a good move and maybe here Anna needs to go king g2 this is a very difficult move to make because you're leaving this pawn just leaving this king here and and he played knight g5 very quickly I think he knows this I actually think he knows this and now Anna needs to go king g2 we can see uh, Ivan is staying there but she needs to go king g2 this is absolutely what she needs to do she really needs to defend on f3 this is what she needs to do absolutely so king g2 she has to play here now this is absolutely the way to stay in the board I would say if she goes here this is very scary check here king e2 queen b7 and here we have maybe king g3 I don't know but maybe it could be that in this position I don't know if rook take here here and maybe rook c8 is maybe the strongest move here I don't know because after queen b3 we also have queen take d1 so this would absolutely be such uh, oh so 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 uh, scary to play this would absolutely be spare, spare, so scary to, to play knight h4 I have no idea king h2 we have queen f3 and we will need to go the rook to g1 but this is really very very scary to play so I would say that Anna in this position you can see how Ivanchuk is looking but Anna needs to go king g2 if she goes bishop e3 uh, she will absolutely after this move check here king here we have rook sorry not rook c8 rook c8 she will need to go queen d8 but I don't know and if we move like this can we go knight d4 and we will have position like this where you have rook c4 and you will get you will get the pawn back you will get the piece back and also also there is no mate you will get the piece back and not only you will get the key piece back this pawn this king is very weak so this is just very very good for this is just very very good for her opponent so her opponent find these very good moves I believe he knows this that he has seen this before that he knows there's something that doesn't work for her I believe so but it could be that he find it at the board absolutely it could absolutely be that he find it at the board too so king d2 I would say that this is very difficult for Anna to find uh, it's very difficult move to play I think Anna will go bishop e3 but it's very very scary if she goes bishop e3 we will have knight we will have maybe knight f3 here but then we have this rook c8 move and this is I don't know queen d8 what will happen here we have rook c d8 and we will have what I saw before so Anna will have to fight with the pawn less but it will not be the end of the game but this pawn should be on g3 on h3 she has a pawn less but she has also very weak kingside and its problem with the queens on the board because after knight d4 we saw this before you have rook c4 and you will just grab the you will absolutely grab the piece here there's no way to defend it so Anna needs to go he played this very very good move knight g5 this is the position of the board I'm a little bit sad that Anna got into these problems I'm a little bit sad uh, about it and I just hope that she will uh, that she will fight she will keep on fighting whatever happened in this game and we see that her opponent has got the position he wanted 
and now he played this. So I think Anna will go bishop e3, but king g2 is the best chance, I would say, to keep in the game, king g2. And if you come here, rook here, maybe we will come, come go queen b3, and we will play this position. And I'm just wondering here, can we go rook a e1 here? Could this be a possibility to play here? Absolutely, because this position we don't mind to play. We would absolutely don't mind to play this. So I, so I would say that in this position, uh, king d2, maybe queen, I don't know, queen b3. No, king d2 is the move I really hope Anna will play. And after a move like rook c8, maybe he has to go queen b3. Could it be? And we have queen d7. Um, there are threats, I don't know, there are threats everywhere. I don't really know, is this the best move? And we have queen take with the rook here. And this is just such a long variation. But here Anna will absolutely be trying to fight after queen f5. Maybe we can go queen d3. Could this be possible? Uh, could this be possible? It could be, but it's not a good one because after that there are so many folks coming and we have this position and she will absolutely have to fight with a pawn there. There are lots of position. Anna needs to go king d2. I think actually she will go bishop e3 and that is so much dangerous. King e2. Yes, she plays bishop e3, but this is just, oh, this is just very, very dangerous. Knight f3 was played here and it was played automatically. What is she her opponent, what is she going to do here in the next uh, move? What is she going to do here? Uh, well, here she needs to go king d2. I'm sorry. And he played it immediately. He played it immediately. And I would just feel um, that all his pieces are so perfectly placed. Anna needs just one move. If her rook was on d1, she would be fighting here. She would absolutely be fighting. But she needs to go king d2. She needs to have king h1. I have no idea. Uh, queen b7. We are going queen c5. Can we go something like this? Knight d2. We will need... We will need yes to come back and we will have to play position like this. Yeah, it could be, it could be, but what is going to happen here? Rook e6, now we will take on d2, we will be fighting here. This is absolutely possible. So it's not maybe yet finished. So maybe Anna will go king h1. I'm not sure what is better. King e2 looks the most logical, but of the king h1, and if her opponent now can her opponent play knight h4? And what is Anna going to do here? She needs, she cannot go king d1 because we will have some uh, nasty threats here. So she will need to go king h2. And then we have this move threatening mate here. And she will have to play this. And knight f3, we will go king gt. And this is just so, so strong. How is she going to defend against this? I cannot see that she can do that. Her, may, maybe knight f4, maybe knight f4, but it's getting to look so, so dangerous the position and it's but of course it is when her opponent played this it's just so so dangerous Anna is down to seven minutes I'm not so worried about the time in general because her position is so difficult I'm more worried about her position what is she going to do here uh, it looks very difficult for her because she's having a piece up but she is uh, she's missing one move. She needs to have the king rook on d1 she would absolutely be in the game if the rook was on d1 but like this, because she could have escaped with the king to maybe to f1. This would have been so, so much better. But now this is a big problem because after, if she comes, a king d2 can also come. And after queen b7, uh, she will just try to run up here with the king to g6. And after we have rook d6, we have a threat here. Can we go, I don't know, knight g1. But we have a check here. And I'm just wondering what is happening. We can grab it. We can grab it and we can go knight to get free. And this will actually be better for white because you have rook and two pieces for the queen. Even if black has a pawn, this is not enough. So it's not always uh, finishing the end of the game. There are lots of things to fight for. I just hope that Anna will go in this position. This is the position here that she will go king g2, that she, she will play this king g2. Absolutely, this is what I'm hoping she will do here.
So she is running up with the king, but I don't know. It could be that I don't know what is better, king e2 or king e3 or king h1. It's, there are only two moves possible, but it's so difficult. I was just hoping for this, but maybe king h1, we will absolutely see them. Uh, queen d7 is not the problem because we can go knight g1. And when you take here, we will take back here. And after a moment like this, I'm just wondering, we will get it. Black cannot do anything more than perpetual, so we will absolutely be fine. So king h1, but queen b7 is, yes, so, and now we're threatening a check. We will need to get away with the queen here. And then you have this check here, and we will come back maybe somewhere like this. And I'm just wondering, now we have rook e5. We have rook e5. And we have queen take e7. What is happening here? We have queen take f1 check. We have a position like this. And queen takes. And this would be the end of the game. So this is absolutely the problem. There's so much attacking here. I think king g2 or king h1, both of them. It's just very, very difficult, whatever she plays, whatever she plays. I would probably try king g2 just to get out with the king to g3. King d2 and I guess queen b7 or maybe rook c8. I don't know which move you should do first. Rook c8, um, maybe we have, do we have something we could try to escape here? Maybe we have this and after the queen comes to b7, now we are actually in the game. We are actually in the game. And I'm just wondering, you check here, king g3 or king h2, we are just absolutely in the game. So I'm hoping for king g2, maybe king h1 is better. I don't know which one. I would have gone king g2, maybe to run out on the board. And Anna is down to four minutes. She's really down to four minutes. She doesn't have so much. Uh, she doesn't have so much time here. And uh, so, so uh, but she has such a difficulty. There's only two possible moves. There's only two moves, king e2 or king h1. But wherever she goes is going to be dangerous. If she comes here and this move is played, she will absolutely, I guess, have to go king g3. This is absolutely unnecessary to play this just to run out. And I don't know, could it be h5? h4 is coming. Can we stop it somehow? We need to go here. But after this, we have this tremendous queen d7. That's we have it. No, we have queen c4 here. So it could be that you have. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we even can play this move. Can we do it? It could absolutely be that we could play this move. We need to go rook g1. And this is getting so scary. We are getting something here to f3. Maybe we can start stopping it. We are defending. We have a piece more. But it's just so, so dangerous to play this position. It's so, so dangerous. But here, so I prefer king g2 just to run out. But let's see what Anna will be doing here. Let's see what she will be playing in this position. And But she's down to three minutes. She is down to three minutes. And I just feel sorry for Anna. She had such a tough game. And now again, she is coming under pressure. But her opponent has played exactly what he wanted. He know this position very well. And I don't know if he knows all to the sacrifice. But he knew the opponent, the opening very well, and he played this beautiful bishop take e5, and Anna just uh, took the bishop, but that was not so good. She played king, she played king g2. <laughs> yes, she played king g2, and I guess this is what I uh, would probably also try. I think we'll see queen b2. We could also see rook c8, rook c8, queen d8 here. Can it be the other rook? To d8, could this be a position? I'm not sure it could be, but then we have to go maybe queen uh, knight d4. This could absolutely be a possibility. So after this move, her opponent played. What did he play? He played very quickly. He played queen d5. He played very, sorry, this is the game. He played queen d5, but is this actually the best move? Ah, because he's threatening the queen. He is threatening the queen. So queen d5. I'm just so surprised. Does Anna have time for, I don't know, queen c5. This will be your mate here. 
is made here. Oh, so this is, and he played it immediately. He played it immediately. So can Anna go King Ye Free here? Can she play this? This is absolutely the move she has to play. But he has this H5 move. He has this H5 move. And this is just, and he played it so quickly. I think he just know everything here. Queen D5. Oh, this. Oh, I'm so, oh, this. I'm just so sorry because Anna is going to lose some material here and or she's going to be mated but after king e3 h5 is the only move but it's such a good move if you go h4 here we have rook e4 and there's no way you can absolutely defend against this can we go something like knight f4 then we have queen f5 and there is a mate here there is absolutely a mate here uh, i i don't understand if you take here we have isn't this queen e4 no we can take here but you have you have this move you take here and you can take the queen. So it's just everything works the way for her opponent. But uh, Anna has played. She played king d3. And now there's only one move for her opponent to play. There is only one move for her opponent to play. And let's see. Will he find this only move? He has played everything so well. So I think actually that he will do that. Can he go rook e4 here immediately? No, because there is no threats. We will go with the rook. I don't know. doesn't matter which rook we go. We go yes, the rook to d1. And this will absolutely be fine. No, he has only one move to play. So unfortunately, this move is still just very, very good. I don't know. Knight f4 could what happening h4 here. What could she be doing? And after this, we will have this position, knight take here, bishop take here, and you can play in different ways, but maybe rook take, this is maybe not the best. We have knight take b4, and we can still maybe be fighting here, but um, maybe not so well. So, what did he play? What did he play? I cannot see what he played. He played so quickly. What did he play? Did he move the h pawn or not? Did he move the h pawn or not? I don't see if he did. Did he go knight g5 or what did he play? I cannot see. He played knight to g5. He played knight to g5. This he played immediately, but this is not the best move. The best because now Anna is actually much better. Now she has knight f4 and check and king h2 and she will be in the game. She will absolutely be in the game. He played knight g5 so quickly, but Anna has knight a4, knight f4 and she is much better. Knight f4, but she took here. She took the bishop. Uh, she took here. And what will happen here? No, take king h2. And what will happen? We have rook d2 here. She will absolutely be lost now. She had too little time. She had for little time. And she took the knight. Knight f4 and Anna was winning. Knight f4 and Anna was winning. And now after this, this king h2, rook d2 is absolutely winning on the, for her because there is no way she can do she will have such a bad king she will absolutely have such a bad king after this move here taking here i cannot see how she can save the game any longer maybe you can play something like this but her king is so so weak we have equal pawns but maybe she can fight here still we have equal pawns and he played rook d2 oh i'm so sorry but and we have this position at the board anna had a chance the problem is she had so little time if she would have had enough time she would have found knight f4 and she would have been winning she would have been winning in the position but she took on g5 so quickly and now she has having very very big problems here i don't know what she's going to do i think we will see maybe queen c4 could be possible could queen c4 be possible can her opponent play take with this rook could this be a possibility absolutely can play with this way we go check here and you can actually go whatever you want you can also play this here and anna will need to come back here and just yes, to fight in this position but after queen f6 i don't know where is this poor king going maybe here so oh i'm so sorry Anna had a chance here. She really got the chance. And Rook D2, I think Anna missed that. She took 
Um, so quickly on um, G5, she should have spent more time, but she was down to two minutes. She was so close and she would have been winning the game if she find knight F4. She would have because it was attacking and it was attacking the king, the knight, the bishop and also defending on H3. She would have been winning. Uh, maybe her opponent could try some things, but it would absolutely have been a winning position. Now Anna is I'm just so sad. Uh, we have this position, uh, just so sad for Anna, but um, that she uh, uh, have to play this. And um, but she had too little time. So I would say, if Anna lose this game, it was because of time, also because her opponent got the right position, but he played too quickly in the right position. He had one move and he didn't find his one move. So what Anna did was good, walking out for the king, but now Anna took too quickly on g5. She took too quickly on g5. And now she's having, um, she, her opponent will get the piece back. There is nothing she can do to save because uh, she can threaten the rook but uh, she will need to do uh, something she will absolutely need to do. You move her queen, she can prove it here, but if she do it, her opponent will just take here and it's also defended. So I guess Anna will go queen c4. I think this is what we'll see. He will take on e2. I don't know which one, she, but she needs to move here. She really needs to move here, absolutely. Oh, and I'm so sorry, but no, I'm not roasting her at all. Anna has been fighting. She has got such, um, uh, sorry, this is the position at the board. She was just giving the opponent the op position he wanted, or he just got it exactly. He knows this very well. And when he was attacking, he made a mistake. Anna could have won, but she answered the mistake with a mistake. And now she is having a very, very difficult moment here. But it was because she had too little time. So time is so important. Anna is down to 30 seconds. Anna is down to 13 seconds. And she has played. What did she play? She played queen b3. This is what she played. But I didn't like this move so much. We will have rook took e2. And now this will absolutely be no way of saving this game. I cannot see this is any way of saving this game, only if her opponent will not be so good in end games. But she will absolutely now need to go queen d3 here, and we can play this end game. We can go here, and after something like, we put the rook here, we are fretting some knight here, we go g6, we will absolutely, Anna will lose also the next pawn. There is no way she can defend for the next pawn. Maybe she in this position and she cannot, yeah, there is absolutely nothing she can do here. So uh, her opponent also took with the right rook. We have this position at the board and I'm sorry, um, Anna has, uh, she has still lots of more to make but she needed actually, he played this rook, the right rook here to take here. And now he's threatening mate. Anna will need to go something. She can go queen f3 if she wants to. She can go queen f3. And then this is actually maybe the best move she can play, queen f3. I'm just wondering if you give a check here, can we take this pawn? I don't think so. If you go here, can we play this? Uh, but then we have rook d3 and there are some very, very nasty things here. I don't know how we are, uh, we are not, it's going to be something very, very, uh, very, very difficult here. So she will lose this, absolutely. So what did she do here? What is the position? We have it here. She played queen f3, she played queen f3, and there was, uh, there was a queen e5 check. She went down with the king to g1. She is absolutely now defending everything. Maybe we will see the rook to b2. It could be absolutely a move. Rook to b2 that she will play this. Now she can go and take check and take an a7. What is her opponent going to do? But Anna is fighting. She has very little time. She still has 10 more moves to make. What can her opponent, of course, if her opponent goes wrong, there is a mate on the last rank. That's why he wanted to give the check. So what is a good move? I guess a5 is a very good move, maybe to play, but maybe this is not. Maybe we have check here. We have rook here and we take this one. And how will a position be like this? Can we go something like rook f1 and you are moving away the rook and we are getting some counterplay here. We are maybe getting some counterplay here. You need to go some g6. Can we defend this? 
I do not know if this is possible to defend. We might need to go uh, A3 here and this after this move we are just having lots of problems. If you come here I guess we will go maybe well, maybe we will even go rook d3 and I just want to say that this is completely winning because you have three against one this pawn will be lost it's not worth anything three against one will win so let's see Anna play queen f3 she play queen f3 and uh, she's still fighting on the board she is still absolutely fighting on the board but she has a very difficult position her opponent has 40 minutes and he played h6 he played h6 what is the best move for Anna to play here now um, could it be can she give a check and take the pawn no I think that is very dangerous to do I think I think this is what we'll see here but after this move this we have queen d3 check and it absolutely will finish the game because we have this mate with check here check here and mate and it could be that Anna no she hasn't she has played she actually played what did she do she played something she played what did she do she played um sorry her opponent playing h6 Anna played rook to c1 I think this is what was played what will she do here now I think this is what she played we will probably see the rook to b8 but Anna is just trying to see if she can have some counter play she can give a check here and after king h7 can she does she dare to take this pawn no we have this mate again this tremendous mate has he seen this mate he has such a lot of time it's not sure Anna has seen his mate and if it takes on b2 it could be a danger that Anna will go for it also in a position uh, so uh, that he will go for it so he can go rook take b2 he can also play he can play something like king h king h7 if he wanted to also but I don't think he will do that so I expect him to take on b2 and yeah I'm just so uh, a little bit sad what have happened after a move like this she can give a check here she can give a check but her opponent can only just go f5 you can also go g6 and you are defending we will need to come back here and you will come king g7 and we see everything is so well defended there is no way that we can put maybe we can try we cannot go rook d8 because it's a check here let's go back because let's see if his opponent is playing quickly if he's playing quickly let's see what he will do here but rook take b2 is absolutely fine everything is winning for him here because he has some mate ideas Anna's queen need to be defending here but he played king h7 so it means that if Anna take on f7 and it's possible she will do that we have queen g3 so he has seen this very very beautiful idea that he can actually just take uh, he can just take play queen d3 so I don't know maybe king h1 could king h1 be a move to play but this was absolutely be very difficult to play this king h1 but uh, to play and the idea is if you come here we want to take on f7 can we have something no we have rook e3 and there are so many threats we cannot defend h5 here and if we're coming here I don't know there will be this mate like this oh no this is just this is too much there are too many pieces attacking so Anna is having this he played king h7 he has seen this beautiful mate he has seen it and I cannot see any way for Anna to save this game I cannot see any way for her to save this game maybe to go b3 could be a moment just yes, to keep one of the pawns here yes yeah, to go b3 she could also go rook c4 and let's see you coming here and maybe now she can try something like I don't know do we want to go rook f4 could this be a possibility here could this be and we want to take on uh, we want to take on on f7 absolutely you can go here we take on f7 but we're not so concerned on the, about this we can just maybe grab another pawn and we see that this pawn will absolutely decide the game so let's go back let's go back Anna has played she played the rook to c1 king h1 what did she play here she played rook to c4 absolutely she played rook to c4 we will absolutely see rook take b2 here this we will see 
And I am sure we will see this after Rook B2. Could it be that Anna wants to go something like Rook G4 here? Just try to get some activities, defend against this, uh, defend against, and now threaten finally to take on F7. But even this, I would say, would not. Uh, then we can take on B4. And but even this is just difficult because it's two pawns down. It's two pawns down. And let's see, so Anna played active with the only piece she can play actively. She played this rook c4, she played this rook c4, and uh, both of them have seen that the queen needs to be here, otherwise there is a very beautiful way for uh, white, black to win this position with queen e3 check, we saw that. So we know two rooks on the seventh are so strong, and here there are two rooks on the seventh, and there's also queen on the board, and it's a terribly weak queen, which is not a king, which doesn't have a pawn here on g2. So this is just very difficult. Rook take b2 was played here. Rook take b2 was played. I don't know what Anna is going to try it here. I would have loved uh, to play, uh, because again, queen take f7, there will be a mate, and and she take it, and now I'm just sorry, we will see queen d3 on the board, and this will just be the end of the game. We, this will absolutely be the end of the game, and he play queen d3, and now I think Anna cannot do anything else than to resign here. She cannot do anything else than to resign in this position. I think this was what she, she didn't see that. She thought she had defended against everything. So I'm just, after king h1, rook f2 and this would absolutely be the game end of the game so there's nothing she can do this is the position and i'm just so sorry that uh anna will lose this game but she has been fighting she has been fighting very well she had one moment she was winning only one moment she played king h1 i think her opponent will just grab the pawn and after anna will have to come back and now he will absolutely uh, he will absolutely, uh, he can play, uh, he will come back, queen g3, Anna will have to go king h1, and he will take on f2, and he will, this will just be the end of the game. So, but it's, yes, rook take f2, he plays this very quickly, and Anna can only resign here. There is nothing she can do. She's having three pawns down, but not only the three pawns down, she had no king, and this will be the end of the game. I'm so sorry for Anna. She will be sad about this game, but uh, uh, but these things happened. Her opponent got the position. He knew well. He knew the sacrifice, but he made one big mistake. Anna had one moment. She had one moment. She was fighting well, but with only two and a half minutes, she didn't uh, find the right move. And then she went wrong, and then there was no really chance for her to save the game. So yes, there will be a new game tomorrow. Anna will probably play with the black pieces. She will play with a lower rated player, and she will, she will just have to come back to uh, come for to bounce back tomorrow. There's just nothing she can do. She's just thinking here. But there's threatening queen, threatening mate on h2. This is absolutely uh, just uh, just now losing the game and um, so there's just nothing she can do then to resign she's just spending a little bit of time but there's nothing absolutely nothing she can do in this position so this is the things that happen in chess we play we can win we can draw we can lose and so anna now she spent she you know she played this really long game she was under pressure here and because of time she didn't get the right she didn't find the right move she played too quickly with two and a half minutes on the clock and that was yes such a pity that was such a pity but here it is tomorrow will be a new day we have to try give back and fight chess is like that sometimes it goes our way sometimes it doesn't go our way and then it's just to mm, yes a little bit to think of something else to think of some beautiful things and to play a new game and to enjoy the game tomorrow Mm. 
So now she resigned. So now she resigned. And so the game now is just finished. There was nothing to do. She will be, of course, very sad. But you can stay here. And now she said knight f4. She said knight f4. She knew that she could go knight f4. This is what she said. And then she is winning. She is winning. And she saw it afterwards that knight f4 was the right move. And that would have given her a winning position. And so he wanted to give a check. And after she moved the king, there is no more attack. She is absolutely fine in this position. She is absolutely a winning position. And she saw it afterwards. And she, if she had, would have had more time, she would have played it. And then I believe Anna would have won the game. But she didn't do that. Chess is also about the time. It's about everything. So Anna now lost this game. And she is now on two and a half after six points. Uh, she's on minus one tomorrow at three o'clock, four o'clock CET time, three o'clock in three o'clock in in Iceland, she will play it her seventh round. So she will come back uh, tomorrow. And when you're playing, you shouldn't look too much at the rating because, of course, if you're losing, you normally lose rating. Just try to see what went wrong and just try to find the good uh, ways. So just stay a little bit. Anna will come back and just please try to cheer her up. She is, of course, sad. She knew, she found that, and she, you can see how she's analyzing. She saw night before. And it means that if she played knight f4, she would have been winning. But it's like that. So stay a little bit longer. We can see behind Ivanchuk, he is looking at the game. He remember what happened there before. He's a little bit looking from behind. He's still playing in there. And we can also see this young Indian player Anna played against in the third round. He's also still playing against Johan Jartason. And Anna is sitting there and analyzing with her opponent. This is what they're doing. And this is one of the beauty which says that after when the games are finished, you uh, after when the games are finished, you a little bit talk with your opponents, you're a little bit learning from each other. And so uh, and then there tomorrow is another day, it's another game, and it's just is to keep keep on playing. So uh, let's see. Uh, and I think they still talk about knight f4. I think they still talk about knight f4 this moment. And yeah, Anna has been playing here today. She has been playing here now like three hours before she played like five and a half hours. She has been playing eight and a half hours. And she has, so it has been so intensive for her. And she had to start like everyone else had to start at nine o'clock in the morning. That's just very tough. And maybe her opponent did it well. Her opponent, yes, took a bye. He got a half point without playing. And maybe he was more fresh to play this game today. I don't know. But uh, so Anna will be here with you at any moment. So just stay a little bit uh, longer and she will come here. And Anna is now they are analyzing every, everything here. They are ab absolutely uh, analyzing this and I I don't know what they're saying I cannot hear it like you also but uh, um, and I, I guess Anna is asking if this sacrifice was correct or was it like because she find knight f4 maybe she thinks it wasn't right but black had another way which would have continued the position and now they put the kings on the black squares it means that Black won, and it's a way to tell the Digger Dad board that Black won the game. So, thank you so much for staying here and just wait a little bit of time. Anna will be here with you, and she will be sad, but she will absolutely, uh, she will absolutely tomorrow. I hope she can sleep today, that she can get uh, bounced back tomorrow. But uh, this is the things that happen. I have lost lots of games and it's just to come back and it's just to uh, just to 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 think of that tomorrow is it's another day but please share her up when she is coming and she will be with here with you at any moment she will be with you at any moment and then she will explain and she will also uh, say that oh night four. I think knight f4 was a good move. Was it maybe winning a move? 
and it was it really was and i'm just happy to see that even if anna was under so much pressure her opponent find this beautiful peace sacrifice her opponent with lots of time went wrong and so she got the chance she really got a chance and now we have a big smile so yes so and that's the best thing to do just to try to take this game away there will be three more games to come there will absolutely be three more games three more exciting games and you can see all the games Anne has been have been played has been so exciting has been so nervously and today I'm just yeah but it's like this and so uh, yeah her opponent played well he gave Anna one chance but except of that I must say her opponent played very well and it looks like he also knew this position very very well so and some few moments I'm going to leave you Anna is going to be here with you and she is going to tell you about the game and also a little bit about how she is uh, feeling everything what she was thinking and I guess knight f3 was it a shocking move for her no I think she was scared that it worked I think she was scared of the move that she saw it but she didn't know if it was working or not but it did that so yes keep on smiling and i hope you will also cheer anna up so she will be here at any moment and now and now i think i am going to leave you so bye bye and don't forget to stay anna will be with you and tomorrow she will also come back so bye 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 and thank you so much this was a disaster. I didn't see anything at all. I think knight f4, I played bishop takes g5, which loses on the spot. I think knight f4 holds it. Like, I don't see what my opponent does if I go knight f4. I saw it right after I played bishop takes g5, and then I was just like, what am I doing? But knight f4, I don't know what he does. I mean, maybe it's losing for me anyways, but this move knight f3, I mean, this guy is either a genius, or this was the biggest bluff of my life. Like, I don't know which one of the two it is. Oh. Uh, can I wait? I want to see chat. I want to see chat. Oh, guys, this is, a, this is a bit of a disaster. Night of I was totally winning, according to your mom. I am so I am so sad. I am so sad. I saw Night of Four right after I played Bishop Takes G5. I just played Night of Four and it's just winning. Oh, this was such a throw. This was a throw. This was a throw. I saw it like like. A split second after I played bishop takes g5. I mean, in fact, I was going to go knight f4. And then I was like, wait, why can I not get rid of his knight? Like, and then I just played it without really thinking. It was really stupid. Because um, knight f4 was always my idea in that position. And in fact, when I played this whole line with the king g3, my idea there was to go knight f4. So I don't know why I didn't play. Knight f4 was plus three. Okay, wait, can I? Oh, I almost, I want to see the, I kind of want to see the game. I kind of want to see the game. I mean, this knight of three thing that he did, like, okay, I mean, I'm just dead lost at the end, but like, I'm just, I'm looking at the game real quick. Knight of three is a brilliant. <laughs> what is this move? This guy is a genius. What is this? I, I actually cannot believe it. It works. Wow, knight of three is so brilliant. It actually just works. I saw it, but then I was like, nah, like there's no way. So takes, takes, king g2, uh, bishop e3. I have to go king g2 here, bishop e3, knight of three, king g2. King g3 and h5, I saw this. And then he went here and now this just loses, but I have knight f4, uh, sorry, chat, sorry about the close up. Knight f4, knight e4, uh, sorry, queen, yeah, what does he even do? Queen f3, king h2, what does he even do? There's nothing he can do. I mean, he cannot even sacrifice here. Takes, f takes, queen takes. This is, wow, yeah, and then I just go rook a d1 and bam, game over. Oh, that is crazy. 
Knight of four. Oh, I'm gonna dream about knight of four. I I played bishop g5 way too quickly too. Like if I would have just have spent like one more. Ironically, if I would have spent more time on that move, I would have seen <laughs> the one time I play a fast move, I blunder the game. That is actually insane. Yeah. Oh, that is that is annoying. Can I show you? Uh, yes, I can. Can you fix it? Yeah, I can show you guys. Oh, I threw so badly. I threw so badly, knight f4. And I told him right after the game what happens if knight f4, and then he just told me he hadn't really seen it. Um, okay, so let me, let me show you, chat. Let me show you. So here, wait, this is a disaster, but here we have it. Knight f3, this. Bishop e3, this is losing for me. And I saw h5, actually. I thought, what do I do if he goes h5, which is apparently the boss move? And then he went knight g5, which I just felt like couldn't be that good. And then here, I just have to go knight f4. It's my only winning move. But then I just, I, I took here, which is obviously just a terrible mistake. But yeah, I, I think I was just not so tactically good today. Like I could feel it when I was calculating like the whole game that I wasn't just tactically good. Yeah, this is just a big blunder. So this was the big, big mistake. Yeah, and then here there's just this. And then, you know, I'm, I'm just losing. I actually missed here rook d2. Which is, I mean, the moment I took on g5, I saw rook d2, and I was like, oh, I, I, I lost, basically. But, um, but yeah, knight f4. That is really annoying that I didn't play it, but it is what it is. Knight f3 is crazy. Wow. And then before, I thought I was doing good. Like, I thought this was really fine for me, but I just really messed up. Like, here, knight e2, here, d takes e5, takes, takes. And this is a mistake. Wow. I was going to go here, maybe queen c2. Bishop here, bishop d7, takes, queen takes. I have to take here. Bishop takes c5. And then here, yeah. Now is when I just felt like I had a terrible possession, which is, oh, I have to go. But I thought queen c2, rook c8. Oh, I just have to go for a draw. In my brain, I didn't want to draw, so I just, this was never an option. <laughs> Wait, I'm so stupid. In my brain, I didn't, Chat, I didn't even calculate that. Wait, this is actually so stupid. Why did I not calculate this? I literally didn't calculate this because I didn't want to draw. So I didn't calculate the perpetual. I was like, yeah, this doesn't, I can't do this. Why did I, uh, wait, can you, can you go back? What, why did I not? That is so stupid. I was like, how do I get out of this situation without repeating in my brain? Like, why did I not just go back and forth? Yeah, I don't know, chat. This was not a good game. This was not a good game, but... We have to um, we have to push forward, you know, guys. I'm gonna see this tournament as uh, what's the name as uh, practice for Menorca. That's probably what I'm gonna try to do. Cause I mean, I feel like the games haven't been terrible, but I just feel like I'm not playing my best. So I am gonna try to obviously play my best the last three rounds, but I'm going to. I think I need to see this as like I'm a bit rusty, and I'm going to do. A much better tournament in Menorca. I think that's the way that I need to see it to keep, you know, to keep my head up. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know why. I, I just, draw was just not an option in my brain. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I, I was so like, I want to win this game that I just didn't even consider going for a perpetual there in the opening. It was completely out of my mind. That is so funny in a way. That is literally just like psychological. Like it's just my brain just not wanting a result. And then like I didn't even calculate what would lead to that result. Because I saw that I could go queen c2, but I thought rook c8, then okay, I can't go queen d1 because perpetual. So what can I do? No other move. It's losing. So then I just went queen d2, which I thought was genius. Because after knight takes pawn, queen c2, the knight is hanging. But it wasn't genius because he has this move knight f3. Yeah, insane. Insane. Insane, insane, insane. But um, anyways, it is okay, guys. It is okay. When is the next tournament? The next tournament is in one and a half week. So this tournament chat, this is my practice tournament, okay? Can we all agree on this together now? <laughs> this is my practice tournament for Menorca. Yes, Menorca is incredibly strong and the first 100 players are grandmasters, but <laughs> I am sure that I will play weaker opponents. I don't know, chat. We need to think about it this way. <laughs> are you, do you agree with me? <laughs> do you agree with me? <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh or cry. <laughs> oh, no, guys, 
guess I gotta keep my head up. I mean, truth to be told, I am an up and down player. I can play really well. Sometimes I can also play really bad. You know, prior to starting streaming, I would have tournaments where I won 100 points of rating. And then I would have tournaments where I would lose 150 points of rating. You know, like, I can do both. And to be fair, like, I haven't had a bad tournament since I started streaming. But that's also because I haven't played that many tournaments. And I think I just need to accept that sometimes it's okay to have a bad tournament. And you just have to not get demotivated. And just, you know, this is actually motivating me to study chess. And I'm actually, like, every day after I film my recaps, I'm, like, deep down analyzing my games. And I'm trying to learn things from every game. So this is really good for openings as well. Because I learn openings every single game that I'm playing here. So it is a good learning experience for me. Um... And I'm, I'm learning a lot. So, yeah, I think I just, I feel very rusty. And I think, especially during the double round days, I'm just a little bit more tired than what I typically am. And that's kind of showing in the tactics sometimes. Um, so I think, I think that is what is happening. So I need to just, there's no more double round days. I need to just keep my head up and just try to win the last three games, which, which I have the chance to do because I'll probably play someone weaker next round, Copium. I'll probably play something, <laughs> someone weaker next round. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, yeah, but anyways, anyways, I mean, I'm losing probably so far, like what, 30 points of rating or something, which honestly is not like, you guys may think that this is a disaster. I have lost 150 points of rating in a tournament before. <laughs> In fact, I actually broke a record of uh, being one of the people that lost the most points at a World Youth a few years ago. Uh, I think I lost 170-something points in one tournament. So, you know, like, even though this, this is a disaster, like, it's not that bad. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had worse in the past. I've also gained 150 points, you know, in the past in tournaments, but... Yeah, I'm kind of like an elevator chat. Sometimes I do really well, sometimes I do really bad. And this tournament is so far not really going my way. But we got to keep our head up. And I think more than anything, I just, I really appreciate your support. I really appreciate that you guys are, you know, watching my games and that you're supporting me. And when I'm playing my games, I can feel that support. So I, I do, I'm really thankful about that. So I, I, need, I think I just need to, I need to play more chess and study more chess, honestly. This is a pretty good wake-up call. Like, you can't just play Blitz and Bullet for two months and then come to a tournament and expect to, you know, beat everyone. Because, I mean, this guy that I played now was like 2250 or 2300 Rapids. So, I mean, he wasn't like, you know, like he, he, was, he was decent, you know, which is around my rating in Rapid. So, he's definitely, like, he was definitely, like, a bit maybe underrated as well. So, I can't just, like, expect to come in here and just beat everyone. So, so yeah, anyways, am I hungry now? No, guys, I'm not hungry. Food and sleep isn't the problem, it's the chess. But at least we got a cool picture. <laughs> at least, can we get a shout out to the photographer and producer? Um, he's at least taking cool pictures of me whilst I'm losing. <laughs> he's laughing right now. <laughs> Okay, wait, I'm gonna show this picture. I'm gonna show this picture. <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I look intimidating or if I just look sad. <laughs> oh. oh, guys, what are we doing? <laughs> Anyways. That's that. That's that. Um, I'm gonna go back now, and no, I'm not. I was gonna say and cry. I'm actually not gonna cry. Wait, did I disappear? No, I'm there. Uh, no, guys, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. Um, what am I gonna do? You know what I think I'm gonna do, actually, guys. I think I'm gonna take an early early sleep today. Um, and then I think I'm gonna film the recap tomorrow for the rounds today. I think I'm just gonna focus on um getting rested up. And I'm going to film the recaps for, you know, today, tomorrow. And then I have the recap from the game yesterday, uh, round four. That is up right now on YouTube. So I think I'm going to just, uh, yeah, do that. But we are going to be having the recaps coming up on the YouTube channel. So recap of round five, which was this morning, which was a 100 move game. It's going to come up tomorrow. And then this round will come up either tomorrow as well or the day after. So... We're, you know, the recaps are getting, are going to be uh, 
getting posted. So, yeah. Guys, I don't like losing a chess. <laughs> losing a chess sucks. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't like losing a chess. Honestly, the reason I'm actually not super upset is because the game was kind of beautiful. Like, I appreciate the move knight of three so much that it's making me a bit less upset than what I would have been otherwise. Like, knight of three is a beautiful move. So, yeah, that is, that is the only thing that's making me, like... But I'm really mad that I didn't play knight of four just because I saw it, you know? So that's the one thing I'm mad about. But in a way, yeah, knight of three was beautiful. So that's... I appreciate beautiful chess, and that was kind of beautiful. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, that is, uh, that is that, you know, chess is a game where you can win and lose. Why do I always do the worst angles on myself? I don't know. Um, chess is a game where you win and lose. You got to be able to win and you also got to be able to lose. And losing is part of the game sometimes. And sometimes tournaments don't go so well and you just have to keep pushing forward. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not giving up. Tomorrow I'm going to try again and uh, I'm going to try to play faster as well. And uh, there is a chance that I may or may not stay up all night and play Bullet and Blitz. Because I'm mad. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to raid someone now. <laughs> By the way, hi YouTube chat and hi Twitch chat as well. I want to say hi to both chats. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I will not stay up all night and play Blitz or Bullet. I will not. I will not do that. I will not do that. I will get sleep. <laughs> Oh. Okay, everyone, I'm going to get some sleep and rest. Um, thank you so much for watching the game. Thank you so much for watching the stream. Thank you for your support. Thanks to mom for amazing commentary as always. Thanks, producer, for taking pictures of me and, you know, making this work. And uh, thanks to myself for, for playing, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that's that. Um, sub to the YouTube channel, everyone. We are very close to hitting 1 million. And you know what? If we lose a chess, at least we can get some subs on YouTube. So please sub. <laughs> please sub. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Um, what else? What else? Oh, yeah. Sub to Anna Kremlin Extra as well. My second channel. I'm posting all the VODs over there so that we can have a little nice playlist with all the beautiful games I've played in Ray <laughs> <laughs> that I will definitely want to remember uh, for the rest of my life. <laughs> I will definitely never delete this playlist. <laughs> I will never delete this play. Okay, yeah. Uh, sub before the playlist gets deleted. So <laughs> that's that. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, I think that's that. I'm gonna raid someone. Who's live right now? Botas is live. Dina is live. I think I'm gonna raid Dina actually. <laughs> don't you dare ask don't worry i'm not gonna do it i am just kidding i am just kidding but i am gonna get like a 12 hour sleep right now or something i don't even know maybe i should get food but i'm not hungry you know losing a chest makes me less hungry okay um i'm writing dina let's see how it goes for her she was sitting next to me well i mean she's sitting next to me every day because we have fixed boards but you know I, this angle is just not good why do i keep doing this angle like it's just it, it's like too annoying to hold the phone up. <laughs> I mean, am I even a pro streamer at this point? Like, I'm not even holding up my phone. But guys, it's just, it's, it weighs. Like, these iPhones actually weigh more than what you think. Anyways, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for, you know, everyone that subs, everyone that watches. I'm so thankful to all of you. Um, if I didn't have you guys i would just be losing a chest but now i'm losing a chest and i have you guys which is a million times better so um anyways i'll see you all very soon i'll see you tomorrow 3 p.m ct tomorrow no 4 p.m ct no 5 p.m ct tomorrow 4 p.m iceland time that's when the round is happening <laughs> okay there we go <laughs> bye bye